the court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Oscar Hale Jr. presiding. You may be seated. And um, state ready? State is ready. Defense ready? Defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Medina, we have all jurors present? Yes, sir. Go ahead and bring them in. All right, to the jury. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Everyone in. You may be seated. Good morning. Like I said, uh, yesterday we're likely to go until about 5.30 today uh, at the latest, and uh, we'll have a lunch break. Uh, I'll just say this at the appropriate time. We'll see where we are with the witnesses at that time. Mr. Alanis, you want to call your next witness, sir? Your Honor, the state calls uh, John Henry Bradshaw. Can you raise your right hand? Please? Not yet. Can you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're going to give during this trial will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I hope you got. Okay, you may take the stand. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Isidro Alanis. I am the district attorney for Webb and Zapata, and I will be asking you some questions this morning, okay? Yes, sir. Just uh, do me the favor of scooting up, speaking into the mic uh, loud and clear, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Can you please state your name for the record? My name is John Henry Bradshaw. Okay. And how are you employed? I work for the Texas Department of Public Safety as a trooper. Okay. Uh, how long have you been a trooper? Since uh, September 11th of 2016, so about six years. Six years? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you certified by the state of Texas? Yes, as, sir. As a peace officer? Yes, sir. And what are your uh, current duties and, and responsibilities? Um, currently, we enforce traffic and uh, license await, emergency management, combat terrorism, uh, crash investigations, DWIs, stuff like that. And where are you assigned? What's Currently it? in Laredo. Laredo, Texas, okay. Now, were you assigned in Laredo back on September the 15th of 2018? Yes, I was. Okay. Uh, go ahead and, and if you can take us back to that day and, and tell the jury uh, what, uh, what happened um, while you were on duty. Uh, we were on a special operation at the time, Operation Secure Texas, which is a border operation. And uh, throughout that operation, we had immediately received a text message from our chain of command stating that we were to abandon uh, Operation Secure Texas and to go into the city to assist in a bolo of looking for Juan David Ortiz. When you say bolo, uh, yes. please explain that to the jury. Bolo is the acronym for be on the lookout. So, uh, more or less, at what time would this have occurred? I would say, it's been a few years, but I would say approximately 10.30. Okay. When we first got the message. So, uh, what were the contents of the BOLO? In the BOLO, we had a uh, the license plate for Juan David Ortiz, along with his uh, driver license photo. Okay. 
Are the, when you receive a bolo, uh, are there any other advisories or information or warnings on that bolo? Yes, uh, depending on the circumstances. In this circumstance, they, uh, they said to be uh, careful because he was possibly armed and dangerous. Okay. And what does that, uh, does that change things for you as a trooper? Yes, it heightens the level of uh, safety and precaution and training that we use on the particular subject. Okay. Do you remember who issued the bolo? Uh, initially, it was from Texas Ranger E.J. Salinas, and then it came through our chain of command from Captain Lieutenant on down. Okay. All right, so uh, let's fast forward a little bit into that evening. Uh, uh, explain to ladies and gentlemen, jury, what, uh, you, what you were doing uh, in the execution of your duties. Yes, so once we got the, the bolo to be on the lookout to go... Uh, Look for Juan David Ortiz. Uh, I used my training experience based on the facts that I knew at the time and the type of women he was targeting. So I went to the area in Laredo where these women would hang out and I was patrolling that area. Um, as I was going south on San Bernardo, I looked over to my left and I see the, the white Dutch pickup that matched the description of possibly Juan David Ortiz's vehicle. I made a left on to Jefferson into the parking lot. I pulled up behind the white Dodge vehicle. I confirmed the license plate. I ran it in my in-car mobile cat. It did come back to Juan David Ortiz. I saw Juan David Ortiz exit the vehicle and I knew it was him based on the uh, driver license photo. And he entered the convenience store. I wrapped around to pretend to pump gas and I called for backup immediately. Do you remember more or less at, at what time this, uh, this occurred? Uh, I do not recollect exact time. No, but an approximate time. Is it 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock? Uh, probably close to midnight, a little before or after. Okay. So you actually see him, uh, do you explain to, to, to the jury, you catch a glimpse of, of him from from him from his back walking in? No, uh, as I'm going southbound on San Bernardo, I'm glimpsing, scanning side to side, and I see a white Dodge pickup that matches it. I pull into that, uh, I pull into Jefferson to get into the parking lot and then as I'm running the plates I see him exit the passenger vehicle and he's facing me, uh, not directly but facing me enough for me to see his face as he was walking into the store. Okay. So you take a position near the gas pumps? Yes, sir. Um, being that you received that, that advisory on the, the armed and dangerous, what, what actions, if any, do you take? Uh, for us, per training, we, we take the highest level so that it becomes a felony stop. Okay. And what is a, a felony stop? A felony stop is anybody that's committed a felony, felony or higher that's likely to endanger us. Okay. So but we take if, an extra precaution. Okay. And, and what are those extra precautions? Um, once we are able to see the subject, we give him commands to put his hands in the air, to turn around, to put him in a position of disadvantage, to get him on his knees or on his stomach, and then we'll try to take him into custody. Okay, that was your plan? Yes. As part of your felony stop procedures, what type of force are you going to initially utilize? Initially, uh, uh, just command, passive. Okay, is it, but is it, uh, it, it's verbal? Yes, it's verbal. Do you, do you deploy any of, any, any of your tools, weapons? That, in, uh, in the beginning, no. Okay, so at this point in time, where, where is your, your, your sidearm? It's in my holster. Okay. And, and based on your training experience, at what point in time is, are you going to take out your sidearm and, and point it at a subject? Only when possibly deadly force is authorized. Okay. In this particular case, did you at ever any time take out your sidearm uh, towards uh, and point it uh, uh, at, at Mr. Ortiz? The sidearm, no. I deployed my AR style rifle that was issued to me. Okay. Okay. So you you back me up then. Back, yes. Sir. Back up. How did you then uh, explain to the jury how you got your rifle? So once I pulled into the gas station, just because I knew I parked a great ways away, um, a rifle is better used for a longer distance just in case anything were to happen. So as I parked, I deployed my AR rifle and I got a position of advantage and waited for backup. Okay. Uh, 
At this point in time, where is the subject? He's in the convenience store. Okay. Does your backup already arrive while he's in there? Um, it takes him about, I would say maybe 10 seconds most. He arrives, I inform him uh, where he's at and that this is his vehicle, he's inside the store. Okay. All right, so walk us through what happened. So uh, at that point, I go back to my position advantage and Trooper Obregon uh, gets ready. Uh, he's preparing to get his uh, sidearm as well. Um, then uh, Juan David Ortiz exit the vehicle, and as soon as he exit, I give him commands to put his hands in the air and to turn around. You said vehicle. You mean store? It's, sorry, yes, as he exited the store. Sorry. And as he exited the store, I give him commands to put his hands in the air and to turn around. Okay, so uh, tell the ladies and gentlemen the jury what... Uh, what does Ortiz do when he sees you and when you give him these initial verbal commands? At first he questions. He says, well, why are we there? What's going on? I give him commands again to put his hands in the air and to turn around. Uh, he's questioning again. Uh, what's the reason for it? Uh, at this point, me and my partner are speaking over each other. Um, my partner asked me to not speak so he can negotiate or to speak with uh, Juan David Ortiz. So. Uh, I lowered my voice so he can speak with him clearly so we wouldn't talk over each other. Okay. And uh, what is over, what is your partner doing? Uh, he's trying to de-escalate at the time and get him to comply. And he's informing him of the reason why uh, we are there and why we're looking for him. What is Ortiz doing all this time? Uh, he's kind of backtracking. At one point, he starts patting himself down and pretending, him, hey, don't back up, back turn around and then eventually he turns around and takes off running southbound towards Jefferson. So when 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 uh, you you first encounter him he doesn't stand still he's moving No, he's he's fidgeting, he's moving around. Okay. Uh, at this point in time do you see a weapon? No. But I'm conscious since it was armed and dangerous and then um, based on my training experience he was patting himself possibly looking for something in that height. Okay, I'm going to object to non-responsive and narrative. Okay, ask your next question. Wait for the next question. Sir. Just wait, for, wait for the question. Uh, he runs. Yes. Southbound. Uh, southbound towards Jefferson. Okay. Along the expressway. Um, no, he southbound towards Jefferson, then eastbound on Jefferson, and then southbound on the frontage. So he, he runs on Jefferson towards the uh, access road? Yes. That would be San Darío? Yes, San Darío. And then south towards the hotel? Yes. And then west on Constantinople? Constantinople. And then south on San Bernardo. What do you, what do, you do at this time? I mean, are you behind him or tell us the, the best? <laughs> yes, at this time, as soon as he uh, runs for me, uh, I immediately chase after him. I'm on foot, uh, chasing him with my rifle. Um, he gets down, so we go down Jefferson, and then we go down the front of Santa, uh, Santa Ursula, I believe it's called. And then once we turn onto Constantinople, I transition from my rifle to my taser to try to um, get him to stop. I deployed my taser twice, but it was ineffective due to the distance between us. And he gets away from you? He gets away. Okay. What well, at this point, if anything, do you do? So we continue on the foot chase, and then we go down San Bernardo. As we're going down San Bernardo, I see him take a, a sharp left into an open area. Uh, at that point, I come to a stop. Based on our training, uh, we cut the pie. We don't take 90 degree angles um, by ourselves or abruptly, just for safety purposes. So I waited for my partner to cut that pie. That's what we call take, turning the corner. So when you get to that 90 degree, 90 degree turn on San Bernardo and Constantinople, you don't take that, you don't walk around that corner. Uh, and yes, on that one, down Constantinople, we go down San Bernardo. And he goes into an open area to possibly a parking garage or a fenced area. At that 90 degree angle, we took it together. Gotcha. Oh, what, what are my exhibits in my life?
I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 19. Yes, sir. You familiar with this DVD? Yes, sir. What is it? It's a DVD footage video of the Stripes and Jefferson Corner interaction. Okay. Have you viewed the contents of this DVD? Yes, I have. And do the contents uh, accurately depict uh, what's contained within the DVD? Yes, sir, it does. And uh, does it accurately depict the events that you were involved in on September the the 15th of 2018? Yes, sir, it does. Okay. And, and, and what is this right here? That's my initials in cursive, uh, JB. Okay. We've had an opportunity to view this and have no objection. That was 18, right? Yep. That is correct. This You're is 19. 19. You're offering it? Yes, offering it. States 19. No, it's the Stripes Jefferson. Stadium. States Exhibit uh, 19. 19 will be admitted into evidence this time. Can we publish it on? Yes, sir. You may. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Uh, we're looking at the surveillance video from the Straits parking lot. Okay. And please indicate when you uh, appear, if you appear on the screen. Yes, sir. And also, please indicate if uh, Mr. Ortiz uh, appears on the screen. Yes, sir. That's me initially going northbound on 35. That's northbound on San I Bernardo? Mean, northbound on San Bernardo. Is correction, sorry.
us a heads up when you're going to pull them? Yes, sir. Court's permission and the agreement by defense. Can we can we fast forward to the relevant time? There's no objection. There's no objection. Okay. You may. You may. Juan David Ortiz's White Dodge pickup uh, pulling in, and shortly after I pass Southbound on San Bernardo, it should be coming up pretty soon. If you can speak into the mic loudly, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, so Juan David Ortiz's vehicle has already pulled in. That's my vehicle at the light. I just turned south uh, westbound uh, to Jefferson, and I'm pulling into the gas station parking lot. What are you doing right here? Right here, I'm pulling up behind them to determine if the license plates match. So I'm running them in my mobile cat system. At that same time, I'm seeing Juan David Ortiz exit his vehicle and walk into the store. Was he? He didn't, he didn't turn and look at you. Uh, not that I noticed. I think he was just focused on entering the store. And then I pulled into the gas station to pretend to pump gas while I called for immediate backup. Does he in fact enter the store? Yes, he does. What are you doing at this time? I'm uh, preparing my uh, AR, uh, DPS AR um, rifle and p taking a position of advantage on the opposite side of my engine block uh, pointed at the store and Trooper Obregón just pulled up. Does so Obregón know what's going on? Yes. Okay, and now Juan what's Dave happening here? And Juan David Ortiz just exited the vehicle. As soon as he exited, I told him to put his hands in the air and to turn around. Exited the store. What was that? He exited the store. Yes, he exited the store. Um, while we're giving him these commands, he was questioning us, asking what's going on, what's happening. Uh, I believe he stated uh, he didn't know what was going on. Uh, we tried to give him commands, and we saw him s slowly stepping to the left. And then, as Trooper Obi Bones giving him commands after I uh, allowed him to speak, he informs him of the reason why we're there and why we're looking for him. And then shortly after, he turns in and takes off running and there. And then me and Trooper will be going chase after him. Who's that, who, what trooper was running first there? Was that you? Uh, depending on your advantage, I'm the one on the left. Trooper will be going is the one on the right. And eventually, I take the lead. You passed up over the Yes. Course. Did you have your uh, body cam uh, deployed? I did have my body cam, but it was eventually knocked off by my AR. Uh, when we went back to look for it, uh, the Stripes employee that you just saw on the screen informed us that the 18-wheeler tanker had ran over it and it was destroyed. An 18-wheeler ran over your, yes, your camera? Yes, uh, I believe you watched the rest of the video, you can see the 18-wheeler pull up. What about uh, Avian? Uh, his body cam was working and it was uh, eventually submitted. Can we approach? Your Honor? Yes. The witness? Uh, yourself. Yes.
State Exhibit 18 will be admitted into evidence. So when, when he takes a left on San Bernardo, uh, is he in your sight? Um, after the pursuit, like the final left on San Bernardo, is Correct. that what you're asking? Yes, he's in my sight. Do you turn the corner and see him run up the ramp? I do not. Uh, at that point, I wait based on my tactical training. Uh, like I said, we cut the pie as a team, and I waited for Trooper to be gone. So is there another structure before the parking lot ramp? Yes, um, so directly next to that parking garage ramp, there's a fence and that goes into, I believe it was an abandoned property at the time. So there's two possibilities of where he's at? Exactly. Okay, and you hold off? Yes. For backup? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm going to show you this USB that's marked as States Exhibit 20. Yes, sir. Are you familiar with this USB? Yes, sir. And how do you know you're, you're familiar with it? Um, it was shown to me, and I verified the contents of it, and I initialed it. These are your initials? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, what, what, what's, what, are, what are the contents of this? Uh, it's an aerial view of the, um, of the route of the foot pursuit we had. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's a satellite uh, view? Yes. Of the actual route that you took? Mm -hmm. Yes. Which will assist the jury in, 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 in your location in Laredo, Webb County, Texas? Yes, sir. Exhibit 20, sir? Yes, sir. You're offering it? Exhibit, exhibit number? Exhibit 20. It will be admitted to evidence at this time, yes. You may publish. Can, with the court's permission, can uh, can uh, Trooper Bradshaw approach the screen to show? Uh, you may, sir. We have a pointer. I see this one here. He can even go on the screen. This way no, come over here, uh, Trooper. Trooper, come over here, screen. please. Yeah.
this is the sweet spot right here. Yeah. Okay. Please show the jury uh, where we're at and orient us as to your locations. So this is the, the eventual layout of the foot pursuit, but this right here is San Bernardo and Jefferson. And this is the stripes uh, where I encountered Juan David Ortiz. Is that red flag coming out? Yes, sir. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they can't see it. Yeah, I can't see it either. So. Yeah. If you need to step up here, sir, yeah. you can come this way. Mr. Boris, can you escort him here? I don't know if we can figure out how to open this later. It might be from the bud from the back. Here you go. Yes, so this is uh, San Bernardo and Jefferson, and this is the Stripes Right Encounter Juan David Ortiz. Okay. Um, okay. Describe the streets first of all. All the streets at the the route that he took. Yes. So um, this is going to be Jefferson down Furnish Road, Santa Ursula, and then Constantinople, and then back on to San Bernardo. And this is uh, eventually the area that we're talking about, where we didn't know if it went up the ramp or the abandoned property. Can you orient us as to north, south, east, and west? Yes. So. From the stripes, we um, went on to Jefferson, we went eastbound, and then we went southbound onto Santa Ursula French Road, and then we went uh, westbound onto Constantinople, and then back southbound on San Bernardo, where he took another left eastbound, but uh, not exactly sure if he went up the ramp or to the abandoned property. I-35 on this photo? Uh, this is IH-35 and this is his front road. Okay, that's right there. Stop right there. This is a, a probably a better view. Yes. Where did, where, uh, please indicate to us the streets again. So this is going to be San Bernardo and Jefferson. Okay. Uh, when you spot Ortiz's vehicle, in what direction are you traveling when you see it? I'm traveling southbound, and then I um, look to the left. I take a left onto Jefferson from San Bernardo and pull into the parking lot uh, right here in this direction. Where was his vehicle parked? Uh, in one of these two uh, parking spots over here. Okay. Show us now. So this shows us at the intersection of Jefferson and Santa Ursula, or Frontage Road. Uh, then we continue on southbound until we hit the intersection of Santa Ursula, Frontage Road, and Constantinople. You say we continue. Are you indicating the foot foot yes, chase? Yes, we continue on in the foot pursuit. I'm still chasing after him. So show me with the ruler the the path you're taking. So we here uh, we're running um, either I don't know exactly where he's at, but I'm running in the on the highway down the street southbound and then I take this right hand turn down to Constantinople. Mm -hmm. Show us. So continue on. And then as we're coming down Constantinople about halfway I try to deploy my uh, taser twice. Uh, to no avail. I switch back to my AR rifle and then he, we both make this turn on to from Constantinople to San Bernardo southbound and then as we approach this um, open area, uh, I didn't know what it was at that time, but uh, the garage or abandoned property, he takes a sharp left. Yes, but when, when, you, when you take that left uh, uh, there on that corner, yeah. you, you lose sight of him for a few seconds? No, I'm, I'm still behind him. I lose sight of him shortly after he makes this turn. But when he, he makes... Uh, about like 20 feet on me. So when he makes that turn, I lose sight of him as he's turning and I'm catching up. 
Earlier, you testified that there was a fence that you weren't sure if he would have jumped into a property or gone up the ramp. Where where would that fence have been? Directly next to the parking garage. So as the parking garage goes up, that fence goes all along its border. The abandoned property that you made reference to, where is it on the on this video? It's this uh, abandoned property. I believe it's the whole thing, but this is where I suspect that he may have jumped his fence into this area. And, and was that area lit? Uh, no, it was, it was dark. It was abandoned? Yeah. And there's a, it looks like, well, there's a bunch of trees in there. It's a dark place. A bunch of trees, uh, leftover junk, stuff like that. So it was hard to see. The only thing that was lit was the parking ramp. So at that point in time, you make the decision not to pursue into the, the, the abandoned property or the ramp. You wait for... Yeah, uh, just, just for, for the fear of we bypassing him and he ends up behind us. Okay, what are we seeing here then? That was the last image of the ramp? Um, it was the ramp all the way to the platform and then it goes into the parking garage. Okay, thank you. Have a also had a body cam yes sir he did yes sir are you on that body cam yes I am okay I'm gonna show you states exhibit 21 have you viewed uh, this video yes I have okay and what does this video depict uh, the events that happened that night uh, uh, between me Trooper Abigon and uh, Juan David Ortiz it inc it, and uh, it include including video and audio of your commands yes sir to Juan David Ortiz yes sir from the vantage point of Officer to subject. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the witness, the subject of this body cam is going to testify afterwards. So, on the conditional admissibility, we have no objections, Your Honor. Conditional upon him testifying? Afterwards. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, State's Exhibit 21 is admitted into evidence at this time. Right there, he walked inside. He walked inside? Yeah. 3845, I'm with uh, Ahmed Bradshaw, making contact. Alright, thank you, bro. Is that 
That's my voice. What did you just say? I asked him to put his hands in the air and to turn around. And you're screaming these commands? Yes, sir. Hands up, hands up, turn around. Yeah. What's he doing at this moment? Um, kind of shocked, at the, I would say, at the time, and just kind of like fidgeting. Stop right there. Stop, 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 stop. Is this your truck? Is this your truck? Okay, all right. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. I'll explain to you right now. Turn around. Okay, okay, I'm going to explain to you. Okay, Brett, I'm going to do the talking. Okay. Whose voice is that? That's Trooper Obi Wan. Okay. What is the response that Ortiz says? Did you what was that? Did you hear Ortiz's response? Uh, eventually he said, uh, I don't know what's going on. I believe he says I'm scared or something like that. Rewind it and play it. One more time. I want you to listen yeah. to his response. there because this uh, format is not uh, responding take us uh, take us a, a, a second yes sir. Go ahead. potential with the with the murders that's been happening within the past two weeks we want to we want to do an interview we want to do some questioning uh, we, we just need for you to cooperate with us okay all right fine make my way just turn around and make my way this way okay turn around uh, 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 just turn around turn around please turn around uh, hey 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 Where are you in, in relation to Obregón right now? I'm in front of him. You're in front of him already? Yes, sir. Okay, and Ortiz has taken off on foot? Yes, sir. Okay. happening right here so we're making our final turn on to San Bernardo and the I see Juan David Ortiz is a, a quite a distance ahead of me and then he'll finally make this left turn to that abandoned property uh, garage uh, platform area is that you in the front with a light on your uh, on my rifle yes you have a, a light on your rifle yes sir and it's it's on yes okay. Where's he at? Oh, God. 
got it. You don't have it either? Okay, bro, I got it. No, bro, he went out here. He's in here. Pointing his flashlight at that fence, right? Thinking yes, sir. He's gone into that abandoned property. Yes, sir. And you were already thinking of going up that ramp. Yes, we were indecisive at the at that moment. Okay. Being of these both scenarios, what do you all decide to do? Uh, I make the call to block off the that block, and we quarantine. I mean, the quarantine. No, we surround that area with local PD, and so we can clear both areas. What law enforcement agencies uh, responded? Was it Laredo PD or Webb County Sheriff's? Um, it was Laredo PD, Webb County Sheriff's Office, DPS, and then eventually the Texas Rangers. Okay. Go ahead. Wait, wait. Hey, wait. Yeah. Abandoned property, you make yes, sir. To? Okay, it's it looks like it's unkept with tall grass. And yeah, and uh, as we knew at the time, uh, it was unlivable. Initially, it was uh, pretty dry, and then I would say before we made entry, it started to rain. Started to rain then? Yes. We got it, bro. Yeah, yeah he's in here. He's in here, bro. Well, they won't convince he's in that property. Right? Yes. He's in here, bro. Yeah. When he did the corner, he cut it. So he's gonna be on this right here, on this section right here. We, we need a unit on that side, bro. Hey, they're sending that guy. Hey, my shotgun is back. No, 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 I'm good with this one, bro. Ready? Oh, where's the last place you saw him? Right here. We're on this corner right here. That's where we stopped. He made it all the way up, so he's got to be in the same This is what I want y'all to do. I want y'all to stay right here. I'm going to go up top. I'm going to take top cover. 10-4? Yeah, let's go. All right. Come on, lock that area right here. David Ortiz! Come on, Ortiz! David Ortiz! Uh, that's Trooper Lyons. Trooper Lyons? Yes, sir. Okay. Stay at the fence, guys. Come out! Yeah, I'm good. Cover me. I want to see some. 
got a bee, bro. He could have made it all the way over there. No, nothing, bro. Just a time and uh, uh, economy here. How long is this search take place to, to cover and secure and clear all these areas? Uh, I would say about two two and a half hours. Okay. So in two, two two and a half hours, you're clearing, you're securing, doing all this. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it does it does it lead to the apprehension? Yes, it does. personally enter the building with the SWAT team? Yes, I do. Permission to approach? Yes, sir. This is uh, State's Exhibit 18. Oh, we already have an 18. Okay, well then this, this you're familiar with this anyways, right? Yes. It has your initials? Yes, it's my initials. Okay, very good. It's been that minute. Yes, So uh, we're just um, collecting the information that we had because everybody has different pieces of information. And so they're, we're coming together and we're coming up with a pretty much game plan. And uh, the Webb County um, SO offered the SWAT team and then DPS volunteered to go in with them. Okay. You have, you have your... It's up to Shit happens, we pull back, grab it, pull back. All right, and we reassess and we pull over. You're yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we already have one up there. Yeah. You have one up there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have one up there. Okay. Yeah. okay, we'll go meet up with them right now. Identify who who we have here. Uh, yes, this is Texas Ranger Salinas on the far right. Um, I don't know exactly who the Laredo PD officer is. Uh, Captain Galderon from Webb County. Uh, I don't know exactly the the other uh, officer from Webb County is, and it's Trooper Obi Wan, and then more Webb County personnel. Okay, so you have the two lead investigators on site, which is uh, Captain Fred Calderon and. Texas Ranger E.J. Salinas on the Yes, line. sir. Okay. Yeah. 
Let me go with this guy. Check those places where you guys were saying that. This point in time, what decisions have been made? Uh, we the we determined that the abandoned property was clear and that we were going to move over to the parking garage. You begin to enter the the ramp. Yes, sir. All, all the way up, and we're going to clear floor by floor. Floor by floor. Okay. On this video? Yes, on the far left one right there, in front of Trooper Obi Wan. Hotel at this time? Uh, it changes uh, names, but I believe at the time it was called the Ava Hotel. Ava or Ava yeah. or however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, ABA. What side are you on, Trooper? Uh, so I'm on this left side it, from the body cam, it's Trooper Obregon, and I'm right in front of him. You left side? Uh, if, if I'm looking at it, where are you? I'm on the right side. Okay. So. Uh, trooper will be going and then me. I'm the second person in front. You're holding up the rifle? No, I'm the third. Third rifle. Yeah, sorry. I'm counting from the body cam. What is your your understanding or impression as far as his of, of him being armed at this time? Uh, we still believe he's armed and dangerous. So the the lead group is clearing the vast majority of the parking garage 
and the uh, SWAT commander took the last uh, personnel and asked if he can clear all these little cracks in between these cars just to make sure he wasn't hiding underneath or behind a car. So you're looking in between, underneath, and around cars and any yes. cracks? Yes, sir. point in time uh, we're on the fourth floor uh, about to clear it just the top floor um, do you recall uh, don't recollect if it's top floor enough I believe it's the fourth floor okay is that the truck Yes, that's the truck we ended up finding uh, Juan David Ortiz laying in the bed of. I may approach him. Who would it be? I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 22. This is fairly and accurately depict the image on that day? Yes, sir. Right, and uh, that's the way you saw it on that day? Yes. You're offering it? I'm offering it. Yeah. Exhibit 22 is it made it into evidence?
No further questions for this week. Uh, Trooper Obregon, uh, good. Bradshaw. Trooper Bradshaw. I'm sorry. Yes, Bradshaw. You testified at the last suppression hearing, right? Yes, I have. Okay. And um, in the video, you heard, uh, I think, Obregon ask Mr. Ortiz, is this your pickup? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Ortiz answered, yeah. Yes. He took ownership, possession. He, he asserted his interest in the pickup, correct? Yes. He didn't abandon it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he, you know, he didn't say, no, that's not my truck, right? He didn't say that. I, I would characterize it differently. I'm asking you, did he say, no, that's not my truck? No, he did not. Okay. And uh, aside from uh, the things that we saw on the video right now, uh, what other, we know it continues, this video. Yes. And... Uh, what participation, other than what we saw in the video, did you take? Did you go back to the truck? I did not. Okay. Did, uh, well, tell me what you did after this. So after this, so after this, um, we were able to get them in handcuffs. Um, I get an order from Ranger Salinas for me to go get my unit so I could transport him. But I guess I took too long, so Webb County uh, brought up a transport unit up, and they took possession of them. And then after that. I made my way to the Webb County substation. Okay. We know that your unit, if you will, was down back at the convenience store, correct? Yes. And when you went back down there, did you happen to see any activity around the pickup, the, the white Dodge? Honestly, I do not recall. I went back to get my unit to get my rifle and my vest, so that's why I went back. I wasn't paying attention to that. To get your rifle and your vest? Yes. Okay, th that's to go back up and continue the Yes, search. so to I'm get my vehicle to move it closer so I can suit up, get my helmet, vest, and rifle. Okay, and so when kind of like you're going to leave the scene, is your unit over by the convenience store? Yes. Okay. At that moment in time, did you see any activity around the white dog? Um, honestly, I do not recall, but I'm sure there was. Somebody was probably towing that vehicle. Some, somebody was, somebody probably was probably towing that vehicle. Okay. Okay, nothing further. Thank you, Trooper. Just real quick, uh, 
Mr. Pettis here, the attorney, uh, was asking you about his response saying that, yes, this is my vehicle. Yes. And he also made a statement that Ortiz claimed ownership of his vehicle and did not abandon his vehicle. Yes. You began to answer and you were cut off. Yes. That you would characterize it differently. Yes. Explain why it is characterized differently. Uh, the reason why I would characterize it differently is because even though he claimed ownership of that vehicle, he completely turned away and ran the opposite direction. So had he followed directions and just complied, it would have been a different scenario. So him running away from us and the location of his vehicle, I characterize it as abandonment. Abandonment. Yes. And that's what, in your training and experience, yes. he abandoned his vehicle. Yes. And therefore abandoned his rights to that vehicle. Yes. I'm going to object to that, Your Honor. This witness is not qualified to answer that question. Well, the same question you asked him. Um, it's the exact oh, same question. Oh, oh, oh. So he abandoned his rights to that view. Ask and answer, Your Honor. Sustained. No further questions. Nothing further. You missed it, though. Yes, thank you. You want to call your next witness, sir? State Calls Trooper Abiel Obregón. Yesterday, sir. Good morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mr. Alaniz. I'm the DA in Webb and Zapata. Could you please state your full name for the record? Uh, yes, sir. It's Abiel Alejandro Obregón. And uh, how are you employed, sir? Uh, with Texas DPS. How long? Uh, Close to eight years, sir. Seven years to be exact. I'm sorry. Okay. Are you certified peace officer? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. What are your duties, sir, as a state trooper? It's to execute the mission of the department, sir, to protect and serve Texas and its citizens. Okay. Now, I, wanted, I want to direct your attention back to September the 15th, 2018. Do you remember that day, sir? Yes, sir. Were you on duty that day? Yes, sir, I was. Okay. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you were doing that, that, that day. Were you on duty in the morning or in the evening? It was evening, uh, routine patrol on 35. Okay. Uh, me and Bradshaw were working nearby from each other on 35. Um, and that's when uh, we received a, uh, a text um, stating the details of, um, of uh, what, what, the, uh, what the mission was or what, the, uh, what, we, what, what we were supposed to do. Uh, Would that be a bolo, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. What was in that bolo, sir? That bolo, uh, that text message was a bolo, and it contained information uh, regarding uh, Ortiz. Um, it had his picture from his DL, his driver's license from Texas. Um, it had uh, the 28, which is uh, the license plate. Uh, I can't recall the license, but I do know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was a DV plate. Um, and uh, the make and model of the vehicle as well. Do also, you, I'm okay, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Also within the text, there was, uh, it did say, uh, possibly armed and dangerous, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you, sir. Do you see Ortiz in the courtroom today? I do, sir. He's right there. Can you please point him out an article of clothing he's wearing? A uh, black suit, a uh, burgundy tie, and a uh, gray shirt. Okay. I'm going to fast forward a little bit uh, in the evening that time, but uh, did you eventually encounter Ortiz? I did, sir. Yes, sir. Tell us about that. Uh, I did encounter him. Uh, I was patrolling San Bernardo. Um, Bradshaw went over the uh, over the DPS radio and advised that he uh, he made contact with the uh, with the vehicle that matched the uh, the matched the vehicle that was described on text. Um, I make his location. I was maybe a block away from him. I get there within 15 seconds, maybe even less. Um, I park my unit in front of uh, Trooper Bradshaw's unit. My unit is right behind. I'd say 15, 20 yards behind. Uh, Ortiz's uh, 
uh, white Dodge Ram uh, pickup truck, uh, DB plates, it didn't match. I get off, George Bashaw does say, hey, that's Ortiz. So I saw him get off the vehicle and going into the gas station. Um, at that point, um, we decided to rally him behind my unit and then uh, that's when uh, Mr. Ortiz came out of the, of the store. Okay. Did you did you have your dash camera uh, deployed that night? Dash camera was on, sir. Yes, sir. The last exhibit is 22. That's been admitted. So the next one will be 23. Yes, sir. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit okay. 23 and ask you if you're familiar with this CD. Uh, I am sure. I did initial it on the uh, top left. Have you had the opportunity to view the contents of the CD? I did, sir. And does it fairly and accurately depict the, the video from that evening of your dash cam? Yes, sir, 100%. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, state's exhibit, state's exhibit 23 will be admitted into evidence at this time, and you may publish yes. Yes, sir. As the video plays, if you can just tell us what's going on and your location. I mean, sir. There in Laredo. Yes, sir. Um, like I said, we're patrolling the uh, downtown area right there. Can you move the mic up to your mouth yeah. and speak loudly? We're uh, right there. I'm just uh, I'm patrolling downtown Laredo. That's a SO unit right there, passes by. Um, I believe this is like maybe a minute and 45 seconds before I, um, I make contact with Trooper Bradshaw. Uh, that is San Bernardo. Uh, San Bernardo. I'm heading southbound on San Bernardo. Um, right there, like I said, we're just we're looking for the vehicle. Um, that's uh, your mission right now. Yes, sir. Looking for the uh, that's that's the mission right there. We're looking for the vehicle. Uh, we're looking for Ortiz. Um, what are the weather conditions? I just saw your wipers um, go off. Yeah, it was a little bit of a mess going on right now, right there. Um, it did rain after afterwards. It did rain. It was you know, but uh, right there, it's just uh, it was just a little bit of drizzle. Um, uh, Still patrolling. I'm right behind the SO unit right there. Um, shortly afterward, Trooper Batchall will go on the radio and um, uh, advise that he he's, he's located the vehicle. Why are you on San Bernardo, Trooper, of all places? Um, if I remember correctly, sir, if I recall, um, the text message did say, hey, go patrol um, that area of, of the city. Were you aware of the people that were being targeted? No, sir. Okay. Right there, you see where I get. You can see where I step. Step on the gas right there. Um, he's already. He's already dispatched. Um, that he's made contact with the vehicle. Um, and that's where that's where he's at. That's where I make his twenty. His location. That's Super Rasha right there. Right there, I see Mister. Uh, I see Ortiz's uh, white pickup truck right there, sir. Now uh, there was no. Cars over right in front of the stru there was there was parking available in the front of the door, correct? Correct, yes sir. He has parked at the far left. Yes, sir, right right behind the uh, right in front of the uh, garbage disposal. The dumpster? Yes sir, the dumpster. Okay. Okay. 
Thirty or forty-five. I'm with the. Uh, I'm with Jack Shaw. Can you contact? Uh, I advised uh, comms and other troopers around the area that uh, I'm the Trooper Bradshaw making contact. Um, that's when I get off the vehicle, and that's when uh, Trooper Bradshaw describes uh, Mr. Ortiz going inside the uh, the strip store. When you when you say making contact, what does that mean in plain language? Uh, arriving on scene to where you know the traffic is located. To you know that's that's the objective was to find that vehicle and find Ortiz. What do you mean by get. traffic? What is that lingo? The traffic is located. I mean. Can you explain to me what that means? Um, yeah, uh, what the mission is, the, our job, our duty, and the job that night was to locate Ortiz, which okay, is what so we did. When you say traffic on on site, uh, making contact, that means you spotted Ortiz. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Maybe 10 seconds pass by, and then that's when Ortiz comes out of the uh, gas station, and then that's when we engage okay. with him. We've already. Um, I'm going to show you what's, uh, what's already been admitted. You were the other trooper paired up with Bradshaw, and your body cam was, in fact, uh, <coughs> operable, right? Yes, sir. And you did record all the events? Yes, sir. Just for the record, we're going to publish Exhibit uh, 21, Trooper Obregón's body cam, just so that you can tell the jury what you did. Okay. Okay, Bradshaw, we'll do the talking. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, sir. Okay, so what's going on here? What are you telling Bradshaw and why are you, you know? Uh, so right there, I made contact with Bradshaw. Um, like I said, uh, that's going to be probably 10 seconds before Ortiz comes out of the gas station. Um, uh, I'm getting my M4, um, then decide not to go for it um, because that's when, Brad, that's when uh, Ortiz was coming out. Um, when, what's an M4? It's the uh, the assault rifle that DPS issued us, sir. So you, you do not have your long rifle? No, sir, I don't. You only have your handgun? Yes, sir. And you take over and giving the commands? That's correct, sir. Okay. We want to do an interview. We want to do some questioning. Uh, we, we just need for you to cooperate with us, okay? 
All right, fine. Make my way, just turn around and make my way this way, okay? Turn around. Uh, 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 just turn around. Turn around, please. Turn around. At this point in time, he's a suspect for two murders. Okay. I'm yes, asking you, is he yes. a suspect for two murders? Yes, sir. You're giving him orders. Yes, sir. Is he following your commands? No, sir. Okay. He acknowledges that his, his truck is that white truck, correct? Yes, sir. He did. He said, uh, uh, and I quote, he said, yeah. Okay. And he says, you're freaking me out. Yes, he does, sir. Okay. Do you proceed to, to give him orders? <coughs> yes, sir. So shortly after he said freaking, um, uh, he's freaking out, I... I do something that maybe I shouldn't have done, but I decide to lower my weapon a little bit more to minimize the stress on him. Um, I still have, uh, well, Troy Tr Bradshaw still has his uh, his uh, his weapon uh, downrange, um, and so I try to minimize the stressful situation and uh, try to give him commands saying, hey, we just want to talk to you, we want to do some questioning, interview you. Um, shortly afterwards, he, uh, Ortiz decides to uh, run. He runs away from you? Yes, sir. Disobeying your orders? Yes, sir. He runs away from his truck? That's correct. Abandoning his well, truck? Sir, Senor, it's opinion, evidence, this, this witness is not qualified to answer that question. Okay, we'll rephrase the question. In your training and experience? Yes, sir. When a subject runs and, and you, you make contact? Yes, sir. To investigate mm -hmm. a subject? Yes, sir. Who's in a, who, who is subject to investigation of a crime and runs away? From their vehicle, what do you consider that? Objection, Your Honor. Again, that's a legal principle. This witness is not qualified to answer that question. Well, you want to approach the Your Honor, speculation, speculation is not Let relevant. Let me address something here, sir. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna give the jury a short uh, break at this time. Uh, it's ten sixteen. Uh, I'll ask you. Uh, I guess we'll be on break for about ten or fifteen minutes. And I'll just remind you not to discuss the facts of the case, please. Thank you. All right, the jury.
Okay. We'll probably try and break for lunch at about 12 ish, so. Um, you ready, sir? Yes, sir. Your witness. You can take the stand again, sir. As soon as he steps up here, you can bring the jury in. And please remain standing for the jury. You may be seated. And you see. We left off uh, when you were giving him commands. Yes, sir. What were those commands? Um, turn around and walk towards the sound of my voice. Okay. Um, those were the commands, sir. What did he do? Did he follow your commands? Uh, no, sir. He acted confused um, for a couple seconds, and then uh, shortly afterwards, he decided to run. Okay. Um, he ran, up and you were wearing your uniform. That is correct, sir. Yeah, I mean, I guess the best way to describe it is he evaded, right? Uh, he didn't follow the commands. Um, after we, uh, I verbally uh, told him what our intentions were. Um, so he did. He did evade from, from the scene. And evading in in the state of Texas is that an offense? Yes, sir. Evading or arrest uh, detention is an offense in Texas. Okay. What classification is that? Do you know? Is it a misdemeanor or felony? No, it's a felony, sir. Okay. He runs. Uh, ultimately, south of the gas station. Correct. Okay. Do you and you're you're involved in the chase, the foot chase? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Eventually, <coughs> fast forward a few hours, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, if I'm not mistaken, class it's a class A, sir, of evading arrest or detention. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I'm sorry about that. That's okay. So, so it's a, right. evading detention or arrest is a yes, class sir. A. Okay. You you get to the eventually to the parking lot. Yes, sir. Okay. And which parking lot is this? Uh, it's the parking lot uh, that goes up to the Ava Hotel. Okay. And uh, are you part of the team that uh, goes in to clear the parking lot? Yes, sir. I am. Okay. And uh, eventually, is Mr. Ortiz found? Yes, sir. He is found um, in the uh, in the bed of the pickup truck. And uh, is he arrested without incident? Is he arrested without in any incident? Oh no no he's 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 uh he's placing handcuffs. We take him out of the truck, place place him on the ground, um, and then we uh, uh, I place handcuffs on him. All the while, you are wearing your body cam. That's correct, yes sir. Okay. Do you remember in relation to the SWAT team? And the other law enforcement stack where you were, were you in the front or were you in the middle or the back? Uh, when we did the clearance up to the garage, um, I was I was the I was rear security. I was I was the one in the back, sir. Okay. Were you able to capture the actual apprehension on your body cam? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, permission to publish and fast forward to that uh, that moment, basically where we left off on that last video. No objection to fast forward. No, okay. so if you identify the exhibit for the record, that's all. Okay, we're... we're
Which one is it? What is it? The body cam? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now there's a gap. The least of the bottom, but by that time these guys were already happening, and we were run, we, we were coming through. The the building, 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 building. Building. Uh, that's the building, or that's the house that we thought he was in initially. That's I was confident he had gone to that house right there. Uh, that's the house on that corner, right before the uh, going up the driveway for to the Ava Hotel or to the Ava uh, Garage parking lot. Uh, yeah, you were very confident that he had actually gone into that yes, sir. property. Yes, sir. Was that because of the easy access or why? Yeah, it was just, the, you know, um, it was accessible, um, his height, um, and also just the timing. You know, um, you think that everything is moving at a normal pace, but everything is actually moving a lot faster than what it seems. Um, so I just thought that from the time we lost visual um, to the time we cut that pie, um, you know, to working the unknown, which is that driveway. Um, I was like, yeah, he could have not made it that far. He must have jumped here. He's here. So we decided to uh, regroup, uh, wait for backup, and then, you know, attack the, the, the building to where we thought that's where uh, Mr. Ortiz was at. Which ended up being empty. Yes, sir. Yeah. So he's moving faster than you anticipated. Yes, sir. Okay. Here you're planning the next move to go upstairs or what? Correct. Yes, sir. Somebody, one of the neighbors heard a uh, noise in between his building and the next. So he's possibly a tall guy. Who was the first one here? Me and, and Rock. Okay. You two guys, let's start leading the way. Let's start moving to where we think this yeah. guy is. Let's do it slowly and carefully. This area is secure. I answer you. The neighbor says there might be some blocks in yeah. my eye. It's like a flower shop. I suggest. Let's move to there. 32. One empty mag and empty holster of the truck. Okay. Tell somebody right now on 35. All right, let's go first. Please away. Right. 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 More people right now going that way. Where do you have the body cam place? Uh, show the jury where, uh, where it is right, sometimes. I, I believe it was on, I mean, I can't see from here, but uh, I usually put like right on my chest, a little bit just uh, center and a little bit higher up to my chest. So like around here, I would say. So you're pointing to the middle of your chest. That's correct. So some, that's why the video sometimes get, catches your arms. Yes, sir. Or your, your... Yes, sir. Okay.
No. Uh, we did up to the point where we uh, captured and secured Ortiz. Okay. Out their handcuffs, sir. Yeah, uh, that's me, sir. I'm yeah. placing handcuffs on. Ortiz. You place the handcuffs on both these. Yes, sir. Where's the weapon at, man?
obviously uh, multiple officers all around him um, so I just try to check his waistline and um, uh, the shoes his jeans and uh, any type of weapons that might you know hurt us on the process of him being transported or being taken into custody possible um, possible weapons such as uh, firearms knives anything that might hurt us or hurt him okay and were any any such weapons found no sir okay Was Mr. Ortiz harmed or injured in, in any way at, uh, when he was arrested? No, sir. He was taken without incident? That's correct. Okay. Any needles? No? Needles? No. You gotta check them out. Injuries? Watch out, watch out. You alright? Nothing hurts? Knees? Did you jump on my hands and get hurt, sir? Is that you going to the spot? Yes, sir, it is, sir. Then four up. Um, Do you recall? I can't recall that, sir. No, sir. Well, we'll keep watching the video. Go ahead, sir. His pockets appear to be empty when when you checked them. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> you're the one that's searching through his pockets. What items did you take out? Um, a lighter, I believe so. Um, and uh, I think that was it, sir. Well, there were other items on the tailgate, not just a lighter. Okay, but no, but from what I took, you, you asked me, uh, that's all I took, sir. Can you, can you put it back on where it was? No, just, just to where, where, he, where it ended right now. Just, just to where it. they stand him up. Okay. And then. Hold on, hold on. 
Where'd you leave it at? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. In the tailgate? Check the truck. Hey, Sarge. 32 tailgate on his truck. Yes, sir, that's me. And I, uh, I guess I believe I'd take a, a lighter um, from his pocket. So that's the tra the a lighter. Yes, sir. I believe okay. so. Like that. Keep on going. Yeah. yeah, it's a lighter. Okay. What's that? It looks like a pair of keys, right? Okay. I, mean, I, I didn't take that away from his pocket, sir. I understand that. After everything finishes here in the garage, uh, do you go back to the convenience store? Uh, no. To, to get your unit is what I'm uh, saying. The unit was already uh, back. I had already moved it, sir. It was uh, I had already gone back to get the unit. Oh, okay. It's, yes, sir. And uh, did you ever go back to the convenience store? Um, I did, sir. And uh, did you witness uh, other troopers, or maybe yourself, I'm not too sure, uh, searching Ortiz's truck? No, sir. I never touched his truck. The truck, the truck was gone. The truck was gone yes. by the time you went back? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Nothing further. Thank you. Yes, sir. Can you distinguish if those keys are house keys or car keys or office keys? Uh, no, sir. I can't, I can't distinguish what they are. Like I said, like they look like keys, they, but I can't. I didn't touch them. I didn't grab them. I wasn't paying attention to that. Okay. No further questions. Uh, just briefly. I mean, when you make an arrest, typically... Let's say you. Yes, sir. And you take any possessions from a, a suspect or someone in your custody. It's typical to log in whatever items you take from them, correct? That's correct. And someone, you have an evidence log sheet, login sheet or something like that? Yes, sir. So it's documented somewhere? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Uh, if you know, were the, were the, were the car keys uh, considered evidence in this case? Uh, no, sir. Like I said, I n never touched the truck. Um, I didn't uh, get those keys out of the pocket. Um, I didn't conduct an inventory on on um, on the vehicle or on Mr. Ortiz's uh, anything that that he has on possession on. I didn't touch any of that, sir. I didn't. No further questions. Nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Dow. Your excuse. Thank you. State call their next witness, please. Your Honor, we the state calls uh, investigator Noe Gonzalez will be uh, examined by Mr. Josh Davila. It's, and is it Noel? Noe. Noe. Okay. Noe Gonzalez with a Z. Gonzalez. Okay. Good morning. Can you please raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're going to give during this trial will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I hope you got. Thank you, sir. May take the witness stand. First, Mike, Mike Test, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, uh, good morning. Uh, can you please state your name for the record? Noe Gonzalez. Okay, Mr. Gonzalez, uh, what do you currently do? I'm a task force officer with assigned to Homeland Security Investigations. Okay, and um, who are you employed with? Uh, we're County District Attorney's Office. Okay. Um, I need to move the mic up. I can't hear and, and if you can get a little closer to the mic so we can hear you, yeah. Does it move? Can you? The mic? Yeah. yeah. There Is we go. better? Yeah, I hear you a lot better. Um, who do you currently work for? Uh, the Webb County District Attorney's Office. Okay. In 2018, 
September of 2018, to be specific, who were you working for then? The Webb County Sheriff's Office. Okay, what was your role at the time with the Webb County Sheriff's Office? I was a criminal investigator who was assigned to CID and a SWAT member. Okay, um, what were your duties as a member of CID and SWAT? Uh, CID, we will take care of uh, general crime throughout the daily basis, the patrol will get, and then we'll just follow up the, the cases. And as a SWAT member, we'll respond to any high level threats anything that was that a regular patrol officer couldn't take care of. Do you have any specialized training or certifications as a SWAT member? Yes, I do. What's some of your background uh, training? Uh, background training, just uh, basic uh, SWAT and prior to that military. Okay. Um, you mentioned military. Did you serve in the military? I did. Okay. Um, how many years? Uh, four years. Okay. Um, were you ever deployed? I was. Um, how many tours? One tour to Afghanistan. Okay, thank you for your service, by the way. Thank you. So, in this case, are you familiar with this case, the state of Texas versus Juan David Ortiz? Yeah. Okay, um, did you assist in this case? I was, I did. Do you remember what your role in this case was? Yes, uh, I was assisting the lead investigator at the time with whatever task they had and they needed. Now, if you know, who were the lead investigators for this case? It was going to be Captain Calderon and uh, Ranger E.J. Salinas from okay. the DPS. Were, were, you, were you part of the investigation in this case? Uh, not not uh, primarily, but I was uh, involved in assisting the primary uh, the investigator. Okay. Did, did you ever um, go across any of the crime scenes? Uh, the last one. Okay, um, do you remember the name of the last victim? I do not remember the name of the last victim. Do you, if I showed you some photos, would you be able to identify um, what's in those photos? Yes. You were at the scene of the last... Yes, uh, I was I one of the, I believe one of the first uh, investigators to arrive at the scene. Okay, um, permission to approach, Your Honor? Yes, sir. <coughs> Exhibit, I believe, was 23. 23 is the last exhibit, exhibit yes. So I'm going to mark these as states exhibits. States exhibits 24 to 32. Okay. I'm showing you what I've been I'm marking as states exhibit 24. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes. Um, is that a fair and accurate depiction of what is in that photograph at the time you saw it? Yes. Okay, that's, that was State's Exhibit 24 for the record. State's Exhibit 25. Same question, do you recognize that photo? I do. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what you saw that day? Yes. Marking State's Exhibit 26. Same question. Do you recognize that photo? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what you saw that day? Yes. State's Exhibit 27. Do you recognize that photo? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what you saw that day? Yes. State's Exhibit 28. Do you recognize that photo? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what you saw on that day? Yes. State's Exhibit 29. Do you recognize that photo? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what you saw on that day? Yes. State's Exhibit 30. Do you recognize this photo? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what you saw on that day? Yes. State's Exhibit 31. Do you recognize that photo? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what you saw on that day? Yes. And now State's Exhibit 32. Same question, do you recognize that photo? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of what you saw on that day? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to tender to Defense Counsel State's Exhibits 24 through 32 for any objections.
put you on her? Yes. Um, now going back, you were at a, how many crime scenes in this case did you actually go and visit? The last one. Okay. The date. Do you remember the date? Uh, it was uh, Saturday, I believe. Approximately, it was Saturday uh, after the interview with Mr. Ortiz. Which, okay, you mentioned an interview. What, what interview are you talking about at this point? Uh, the interview that Captain Calderon and Ranger Salinas had with him. Were you present during that interview? I was not present. I was in the conference room observing the interview uh, live. So you were observing as it was going on? Correct. Okay. Um, now I'm going to take you to the night of September 14th, going to September 15th. Were you present when Juan David Ortiz was apprehended? Yes. Okay. Have you had an opportunity, or are you aware that there were body cam, camera, video recordings of that incident? Yes. Have you had an opportunity to view that camera? Yes. Or that, that video? Okay, um, Your Honor, uh, permission to approach? Yes, the witness? Yes. yes. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what's being marked as State's Exhibit 33. This is Trooper Hernandez's this is body cam. You previously testified have you seen this exhibit before? Yes. Um, have you viewed what is inside this exhibit? Yes. Do you yourself appear in this exhibit? Yes. Okay. How do you? How can you identify that you've actually viewed this? Those are my initials and the date. Okay. And tendering the defense counsel for any objection.
Your Honor. Right. State's Exhibit 33, if you're offering it, submitted at this time. Yes, Your Honor. State offers into the evidence at this time. May I have permission to publish this video with this witness, Your Honor? You may. Okay, now before I play this, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, can you explain to the jury how you became involved on that night? Yes, uh, Captain Calderon, my supervisor at the time, had uh, instructed us to make it to San Bernardo Avenue, which is a uh, busy street on Alberta, Texas, uh, just to be on the lookout for the vehicle that was given to us at the and time. Get a little closer to the mic. I'm yes. Sorry. Uh, once we were at location, uh, the troopers had encountered Ms. Ortiz at the gas station. And I received a phone call from my supervisor, Captain Calderon, that the troopers were uh, with Mr. Ortiz uh, at, the, at the gas station. So I make it uh, southbound on San Bernardo. As, as I'm getting there, I've observed the whole ordeal happening and we, we ended up at the, at the hotel. What hotel are you talking about? Uh, Eva Hotel, I believe it was at the time, which is uh, the tall building in, in I-35. Okay, you, could you describe to the jury what the conditions that, that night were, the weather conditions? Yes, uh, it was, I believe it was drizzling, it was uh, wet. The streets were wet. Uh, it was just a very humid, uh, wet uh, night. I guess. Now, as part of this investigation, uh, you had mentioned that you were assisting the lead investigators. Is that correct? correct? Um, at this point, this night, how long or how many hours had you been up? Uh, since Wednesday of uh, that week, we had been already tracking the second victim. I've been already uh, located at the Mark 25 on, on one of the highways on Webb County. And from that point on, we were already uh, trying to track the, the individual. Okay, as part of your investigation or as part of your assistance in this investigation, were you assigned to question any witnesses? No. Did you, um, on your own, go out and, and um, try to pick up any leads? No. Um, were you ever tasked by the investigators to go and speak to a certain individual or, or, or that, just if you're tasked to speak to any certain individuals? No. Okay. Now, it, this night in particular, what kind of information did you have um, on Mr. Ortiz? All we had was a vehicle and that he was a disabled veteran due to the license plates on the vehicle. That's all as far as we knew. Okay. What about a possible risk? Uh, armed dangerous at the time. Uh, we already knew that he had committed crimes with a wolf firearm. Well, what appeared to we're going to object to yeah. if it's hearsay or speculation. Um, let me. What was your question again? It was. Uh, sorry. Uh, we were asking what information he relied on, I guess, to. Like what information he had that night for Mr. Ortiz? But I can rephrase it. Yeah, go ahead and rephrase it. I think was, the response might have been right. Unresponsive. Was there a um, was there a be on the lookout place for this individual? Correct. What what information is in the is on in a in a bolo? At this time, it was the uh, make and model of the vehicle and license plates. Okay. And is that information that it gets sent out to all law enforcement, or is that just? I believe at that point it was just DPS and Webb County Sheriff's Office. How did you know, based on that, that he was armed and dangerous? Due to the crimes that were committed, uh, that were already committed previously. Okay. I'm going to show you uh, what we've already played previously, but I'm going to fast forward to the relevant part. That's it, wait. We're already evidence and we were running, we were coming to. I'm going to pause it here. Do you recognize the individual talking? Yes. Who's that? That's me. Okay. Wh where are you at this point? We're in the building next to the hotel, next to the ramp, the first building we cleared. Okay, and why are you guys in that building? Because troopers believe that he was in that uh, location first, that they lost him there. Did you find any inf any anything that led you to believe that he was there? Uh, just the uh, troopers' information that they had lost him in the general area. Did you find anything there? No. Okay, what if anything did you do next? Uh, we began planning the move uh, into the parking lot of the hotel. Okay.
This building was the next. Somebody, one of the neighbors heard uh, noise in between this building and the next. So it's possibly a tall guy. Who was the first one here? So real quick, I'm going to go to the actual breach. When you guys enter the hotel, can you describe to the gentleman, and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what the formation is of the officers? Yes, so at that point, uh, our SWAT commander had told us to stack up. Stack up is a formation, a line. Well, we just went one behind the other, and it was two separate stacks, one on one side of the parking lot, one on the other side of the parking lot. But one leading, one rear, just in case of <coughs> anything happening. The reactive uh, stack could react to, to an engagement. How many people per stack? At the time, it was we were using about five SWAT members, I believe. Uh, or six, and then DPS assisted uh, with their their troopers on the on the rear stack. Part of your training, what is going on here in this video? In this video, is one of the troopers was uh, clearing the the vehicles that were left in the back because our main priority was what was ahead, the unknown, and everything in the back. The rest of the troopers or whoever was in the rear was taking care of the little the little small places that he could be hiding at. Now you mentioned your experience earlier, but in a situation like this, with a parking lot like that, um, what kind of dangers or risks do you, would you? Uh, could pro uh, possibly encounter. Yeah, at that point, we, he could be hiding anywhere. He could uh, pretty much engage us from any direction. Uh, we're, we're in the open. There's not a lot of cover and concealment for us. So we pretty much have to have eyes all over the place. We don't know where he's at. Okay, and can you describe the parking lot to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Um, and what I mean is, like, the make. Is there, is it like a wooden structure? Is there concrete? You know, stuff around. Yes. Is it well lit? Is it dark? How, it's how a would you well describe lit, it? That yes, night? it's a well lit uh, parking lot. It's a four-story parking lot, I believe. Uh, it's all concrete, and it, uh, you have different levels, so you have to be keeping eyes going forward and to the rear. present when Juan David Ortiz was actually handcuffed? Yes. Okay, were you present when he was uh, placed into the unit for transportation? Yes. Do you remember what vehicle, if any, he was found in when he was first? It was uh, in the back of a black pickup truck. You want permission to approach the witness? Yes, sir. Show you what's going to be marked as State's Exhibit 34. Do you recognize this photo? Yes. Is it a fair and ap accurate depiction of what you saw that night? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to tender to defense counsel for any objections. No objection. That was uh, 34? That was 34. The state now wishes to offer into evidence, Your Honor. The state's 34 will be admitted into evidence at this point. And uh, I'm going to show you what's been previously admitted as State's Exhibit 22. Do you recognize that photo? Yes. Is that the same photo as State's Exhibit 34? Yes. Is that the truck in which you found Mr. Ortiz? Yes. Can I have permission to publish to the jury? Yes, sir. I'm passing to the jury what's been marked as State's Exhibit 22 and State's Exhibit 34. So um, I'm going to continue playing the video and I'll pause it when I have a question.
Pause it there real quick. Do you can you identify yourself in this video? Yes. And, and um, I guess from your angle, can you tell us, based on the people that are there, which one you are? Uh, the individual with the green shirt. I'm right in front of him. I'm wearing a black T-shirt and jeans. Okay. So I'm behind the I'm behind the the middle SWAT member. Are you wearing any gear? Yes. Are you wearing a helmet? No. Okay. Um, so you actually. Grab the short piece and pulled him out of the truck. Correct. You put your hands on him and everything. Yes. Did he resist? No. Okay. Um, how did you find him? Like, uh, what, what position was he in when he was found in the truck? I, I wasn't. When the invest, when the SWAT member opened the the back of the truck, I would, like grabbed this one of his arms, pulled one of his arms out, grabbed him, pulled him out. So he was face up at the time. Laying down. Was he laying down? I believe he laying down. Correct. <laughs> Would you character if he was hiding? Yes. Yes. <laughs> A lot's occurring off camera, but at this point, and, and we've, saw, we've seen a different angle of this, but at this point, what is going on with Mr. Ortiz? So when we pulled him out, the first priority was to try to locate the weapon. And why so was that a priority to you guys? Our safety. Okay, at that point. so once, uh, how, how did you do that? How did you go about trying to locate a weapon? We physically pat him down, looking for the weapon. Uh, I believe I asked him, where's the weapon at? And he, he said, the truck. So initially we thought it was a pickup truck. We looked back and nobody could locate it. And then he stayed, no, my truck. So we knew that it was a truck at the gas station in Jefferson. Okay, and you heard him say that? Yes. Did you relay that information to anybody? Yes, sir. one of the, I believe it was uh, Sergeant at the time, Felix Nunez. Okay. <laughs> When you say 32 tailgate on his truck, what does that mean for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury? That's uh, 32 is uh, 10 codes for weapon. That's when we advised one of the sergeants that the weapon was in the, in the vehicle on his truck. Now, we hear in the video someone asking, what's your name? Mm -hmm. Is that standard um, police practice when you're apprehending someone? Yeah, so we try to identify, possibly identify the individual. We already have a notion of who it is, but we want him to give us more of a positive identification of himself, either by picture or by name. And what, if anything, did Mr. Ortiz respond to when you asked him? I believe, I can't recall if he said his name or, or uh, he started mumbling some other stuff at the time. I, and um, we could play it and refresh your memory if you'd like. Thank you. David. Okay. 
Now at this point we see you in the video, what are you doing? At that point we were, I think they had just finished prying him down and what I was going to do is fix his handcuffs. And why did you want to fix his handcuffs? Uh, I observed that he was uh, breathing heavily and uh, I believe he was hyperventilating, it sounded like he was hyperventilating so he was already not talking at that point so I believe for his safety just to open up a second set of handcuffs to open his airway. And, and what does the second set of handcuffs do? So pretty much he, Mr. Ortiz uh, a tall guy in my in my view, a big guy. So at that point, me adding an extra set of cat handcuffs would have opened his airway, and it would have been so tight on his back. Okay. Um, aside from uh, um, applying the second set of handcuffs, did you search uh, Mr. Ortiz there while he's standing? Yes, we searched him for any injuries as well. Uh, I searched for any cuts, injuries, anything that medical at that point. Did he sustain any injuries? No. Uh, what about any physical evidence? I believe it was uh, keys, phones, uh, whatever he had in his pockets at the time. What did you do with that stuff? We put an evidence bag. Okay. Um, you mentioned keys and a phone. Is there anything else that you remember was recovered from him? Cigarettes. I believe he, had, he wanted his cigarettes from the floor. Uh, he had asked for that. He had asked for, I don't recall anything else. Cause I'll, the only thing I remember is having the bag and collecting the evidence, turning it into one of the supervisors. Do you know the truck keys, how his keys off his keys? Do you remember how the keys looked? Oh, man. Okay. I do um, we we observed in the last in the last video that his boots were removed. What was the purpose of removing his boots? Well, we're checking inside the boots to see if there was any anything, any evidence for anything that we need to recover. Okay. Hi, That's good. That's good, man. Teamwork, baby. That's we got it, baby. We got this. So you're off camera. Did you want your Now, who took hold or who took uh, custody of Mr. Ortiz? We did, though we're going to share his office. And any, and speak up a little bit. Please. Sorry. Please. Who in particular, who one person was the one that basically was in charge of him? That we uh, transported? Yes. I took uh, charge, I put him in the unit. It was okay. And wh why were you the one that, that took charge of him during he the He had asked me to uh, accompany him in the vehicle. Okay, was anyone else in the vehicle with you when you Sergeant had Felix, when you said time, and uh, I believe the deputy that was driving the vehicle. Okay. Um, did you ever read him his Miranda rights? No. So I asked at the time that we need to read his Miranda rights. Sergeant Felix, when you advised me, no, because we were not going to do any questioning at the time until we secured him at a secure location. Okay. And, and you had testified earlier, you weren't the investigator on this case? Correct, yeah, I was. What was your purpose solely at this point? At this point, well, once SWAT got activated, I, my duties changed from uh, CAD to SWAT, and at that point was to apprehend the threat or eliminate the threat. And as part of your training and experience, um, do SWAT members do the investigation or question the suspects? No. And who, who takes charge of that? The investigator. Okay. Um, Are you aware if the transport had video? Yes. 
Okay, have you had an opportunity to view that video? Yes. Your Honor, permission to approach the witness? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 35. Do you recognize what I'm showing you here? Yes. Uh, do you know what that is? Yes. Um, have you had an opportunity to view this? Yes. Um, how do you, uh, is what is depicted in this video a true and accurate depiction of what went on that night? Yes. And um, how do you know that you actually viewed this video? Initials and date. My initials and date. Okay. Tendering the defense counsel for any objection, Your Honor. Did you do it 35 is a bit of the evidence? Permission to publish with this witness, you may. This is loading up. Let me just ask you some questions. Um, did you ever question the defendant in the in the vehicle? No. Did he make any statements to you? Yes. What statements did he make to you? Uh, I believe uh, we were exiting the parking lot. Sorry, let me just go ahead. I believe when we were exiting the parking lot, he uh, overheard us asking about the weapon, and he stated by himself that the weapon was located in the driver's side, I believe, door. Oh. And then I relay that information to my supervisor. Let me ask you, um, how far would you say um, from the Hotel Ava to the sheriff's station that he was transported to, how far would you say that is? Mm, approximately several miles, I believe. Without using police sirens and lights, how long would it take the normal person to get from that area to the station? Possibly like 10 minutes. And with, with lights and sirens, how long would it possibly take? Less than 10 minutes.
Are you familiar with the term trophy shot? Yes. And uh, explain to ladies and gentlemen of the jury what a trophy shot is. A uh, trophy shot, we use that term in the military. Um, we stop begins in the military. Once we have a high value target or somebody in the particular level, you take a capture or kill. People usually take pictures <laughs> to say we captured. Or On this night in, in particular, was that phrase used? Yes. By who? Mr. Ortiz. And uh, what uh, what exactly did he say? Uh, I believe uh, he had mentioned something at the, the VA, and that's when I expressed myself to him that I was a veteran as well. And that's when he said, started saying, take your trophy shot, take your trophy shot. And we explained to him that we don't do that kind of stuff here. And he continued to say, uh, I've, I've taken my, plenty of those. And what, was your exact, what, was your what was your exact response to that? Uh, we're not about that, bro. Did you ever suffer any injuries when your time in Afghanistan? Yes. Relevant, Your Honor. Do you recognize the images being shown on the screen right now? Yes. Can you <coughs> tell the jury what that's showing? That is us putting uh, Mr. Ortiz in the back of the uh, petroleum. From the point that he is handcuffed and placed on the, the sat down on the bed of the truck to this point, how long would you say that is? Mm. 15, 20 minutes, probably less. Okay, were you with him the entire time? Yes. At this point, is he already double handcuffed? Yes. Who's that second individual there? At the front or in the, the back? In the back of Mr. Ortiz. And and the other person? That's a uh, sergeant. Well, sergeant at the time, Felix Nunez. Well, who's the guy saying next to him? Uh, it's gonna be Ramirez, Deputy Ramirez. Oh, who's this guy? That's me. Okay. Just trying to motion there you tap him on the chest mm -hmm. what was the purpose of that continue to monitor his health make sure that he was breathing and he was uh, all right the whole time the whole right over there what if anything gave you that concern uh, at that point he's my our responsibility I got to make sure that he's gonna get to point B healthy Who are you telling that to? Captain Calderon. And what are you telling him again? That my radio, uh, I had left it with Sergeant Gonzalez. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if it's...
Is in the tailgate of the truck. What does that mean? Yeah, so I, at that point, I uh, I was under the impression that the, the weapon was in the back of his truck on the tailgate, and that's when he's gonna correct me uh, voluntarily to tell me that it was on the in the inside of the driver's side of the door of the truck. And who were you telling that to? To Sergeant Felix Munoz. Mm -hmm. Okay, hey, were you talking to Mr. Ortiz? No. What? The 32? Oh, is in the what does Mr. Ortiz tell you? He corrects me to tell me where the weapon was at. He tells you what exactly? That it's inside his truck. Because he hears me say it's in the back of the truck, and then he corrects me and tells me it's inside his truck. Inside his truck. Inside his truck. Inside. Oh, no. and, and the door panel and the shirt company. And the door panel and the... Okay, you, you asked him something in Spanish. What yeah. was it that you asked him? Where exactly? Down the middle, where exactly? And what does he say? In the door panel on the driver's side door. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Let me stop you there. You make a gesture with your mm -hmm. hand. You tap him and you make a gesture. What What are you doing there? Yeah, he was breathing heavily at the time, so I was concerned for his breathing. I didn't want to have him to hyperventilate, so I was just trying to tell him to control his breathing at the time. Is that also a reason for the double handcuffs? Correct. Him. About the air he was hitting him in the face, <laughs> trying to cool him down because it was a hot night. some voices in the back. Is anybody questioning Mr. Ortiz? No. What is Mr. Ortiz doing this entire time? Sitting in the, in the whole time. You asked him there in Spanish something. What, what was I asked question? him is, uh, is he hitting him in the face? And he said yes. 
There's any objections you would like to fast forward towards the end of the Before you exit, what was it that you told them? I couldn't hear. I, I don't recall. Back. Do you open the door? Okay. Like, Mr. Ortiz? What you told him? Oh, that I'll get him on, on the other side right now. Okay. Oh, I need to get out. I need to get out. guys at this point at the substation Now, where did where did you escort Mr. Ortiz after you pulled him out of the vehicle? To the interview room. How far from that location that we last saw to the interview would you say it is? Approximately 20, 30 feet. Um, in terms of time, how many seconds would it take you to walk there? No more than 10 seconds. Were you with Mr. Ortiz the entire time from the walk from the car to the interview room? Yes. And you had stated earlier that you watched the entire interview? Yes. Okay. From that point, did he say anything to you? No. From the time you pulled him out, everything we've seen to the time you pulled him out to when he enters the interview, did he say anything to you? No. Did he ask for an attorney? No. Did he say that he didn't want to speak to you? No. Did you initiate any type of question? No. What, if anything, did you, did you do next once you got him inside the substation? We took him to the interview room, and I believe he needed to go to the restroom shortly after. We took him to the restroom and switched the handcuffs to the front of, the, of his body instead of the back. And why do you switch the handcuffs to the front instead of the back? Comfort. Who's comfort? His comfort. Okay. Um, do you remember Mr. Ortiz looked like that night? I uh, believe so, yes. Yeah, do you see him in the courtroom? In the courtroom? Do you see oh, Mr. Ortiz yes. in the courtroom? Can you identify him with a piece of clothing? Yes, an individual right? sitting right there. Okay. Um, once you get into the interview room, and you already mentioned you didn't interview him, but did you sit with him? Yes, for a brief second. Okay, did you provide him with anything? Um, any food, water, ba bathroom breaks? We leave him a water. Okay. And a bathroom break. Where were you in the station while the actual interview was being conducted? In the conference room. And where's the conference room in relation to that room where the interview is? About three, three more rooms to the, away from the interview. And how is it that you're able to see what's going on in that room? We have a TV uh, that's monitoring the interview room, and it's live feed as, uh, as they're conducting the interview. 
If you remember, how long was Mr. Ortiz interviewed for? Uh, it was a uh, was a while. I don't know exactly, but it was a while. Was it more than six hours? I can't recall. Okay. At, at, at this point, um, how long had you been up? Already been up for more than forty-two hours, forty-eight hours. Forty-eight hours. Okay. Who else was in the room where you were watching the interview take place? It was, uh, I believe. Different agencies were there at that point. I think it was already established that uh, he was Border Patrol. And at that point, uh, Border Patrol had already made it to our location, DPS, Web County Sheriff's Office, I believe, I believe LPD was there too, if I recall right. And administration was there. Now, as this interview is going on, what, if anything, towards the tail end of the interview sparks your um, your interest, basically? Yeah, he uh, mentioned. I'm going to object at this point. Relevance, Your Honor. Rephrase. As far as what sparks your interest, this thing. Okay, so what happens at the end of the interview? Yes, yeah, so at the end of the interview, Mr. Ortiz. Uh, Again, Your Honor, I'm going to object to uh, relevance at this time. It's completely relevant. What happens at the end of the interview? Well, well he's going to s- hearsay. If he's going to say something that Ortiz said at this time, it's not relevant yet, Your Honor. Well, I don't know what he's going to say. But... Relevance is the interview itself is obviously relevant, Your Honor, and it's Mr. Ortiz. Can we approach you on this? Um, so I was asking you uh, about the the end of the interview. Did you hear uh, the end of the interview? Yes. You were there present for the interview. Okay. What if anything did Mr. Ortiz say in that interview? That there was a like, one last victim. Okay. What What did you do when you heard that there was one last victim? We stepped to the hallway waiting for instructions. Uh, Captain Calderon comes out, gives us the go ahead. Uh, we make it to mile marker thirteen. Okay. And what did you find out in mile marker thirteen? The last victim. Okay. Did you do anything aside from go to the the last victim scene after this point, as part of this investigation? Secure the site, and that was it. What did you see? What did you see when you got to the site? Well, we arrived to the Check location. The time, you wanted... oh. this is a murder. What did you see? What did you observe when you got to the last location? Yes, we arrived at the location. Uh, we specifically been told where the body was at. We observed an individual face down was what appeared to be a wound into the back of the head okay. and uh, no no uh, no life about what time was it when you got there to that scene it was in the morning already it was morning time okay and what, what, what would you describe the weather conditions as it was still uh, humid and wet uh, i believe it was still drizzling and raining at the time in relation to the city of laredo where was this body found uh mile marker 13 on the northbound right side of the highway next to a berm of dirt is that within the city limits or outside or right on the edge? Uh, the believe city limits. Okay. Um, would you consider that an outskirts of the town? Yes. Okay. We're past the witness at this time, room. Okay. Well, it's, uh, it's about 12 noon already. So as I mentioned, we're going to recess close to noon. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and excuse the, the jury for lunch. It, uh, I'll ask the jury to be back by 1.15. And uh, again, I remind you not to discuss the facts of the case, not to watch any news accounts regarding this case. And you're excused for lunch. All right, good jury.
Same instructions for the attorneys. 115, please. 115.
Are we ready for the jury? Sure, you may be seated. Everything good? I believe you had passed the witness. Yes? All right. Your Honor. You may. Uh, Deputy Gonzalez, when you, uh, when you all arrested uh, Mr. Ortiz, uh, at some point you began to read him his Miranda rights. Is that correct? I asked uh, one of the supervisors who we were going to read him his rights. No, I thought you started to read him. No. No, I just asked uh, one of the supervisors that we we're going to read his Miranda rights, and they advised me uh, to stand by. And who, who stopped you from doing it? That was, uh, at the time, Sergeant Felix Nunez. Sergeant who? Felix Nunez. Nunez. But had he allowed you, you would have done it? If I was instructed to, yes. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> and then, I, I don't remember if they asked you, did you see the keys that they took away from Mr. Ortiz? I don't recall the keys, sir. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you, you said that those items were placed in, uh, in an evidence bag. Several items were placed in an evidence bag. Uh, I believe the last item that I recall was a box of cigarettes or something in that manner. Okay. And uh, what, did, what did you do with that evidence bag? Bag. Put it, put it inside the evidence bag, and we took it with us to the substation. Okay, so you had possession of that evidence bag that contains those keys, or cigarettes, a lighter, whatever. I believe I gave it to somebody. Can recall who we passed on the evidence to, and then uh, I proceeded to continue with the uh, with the transportation of Mr. Ortiz to the substation. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out the chain on this evidence bag that yes. has the supposed keys that have been seen on mm -hmm. video, the light of the cigarettes, whatever. Uh, you said you placed those items in an evidence bag. Correct. Okay. Now, what did you do? You, you specifically do with the evidence bag? I uh, recall, I believe, I gave it to one of the supervisors there on scene. Uh, as soon as I collected it, I can recall if it was Sergeant uh, Felix Nunez or who, who exactly I gave it to. But uh, I got moved to the transportation of Mr. Ortiz. Okay. Now, other than Nunez, who was the, what are the supervisors, just I'm trying to narrow down the list. In that specific location where we were? Yes, sir. It was Captain Calderon and uh, Sergeant Felix Nunez. 
uh, supervisors at the. Okay, so so that evidence back, presumably, would have gone to either Calderon or Nunez. Correct. Okay. Now, when you got to the substation, is that at seventy two oh nine East Saunders? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. And do you recall, Mr. Ortiz's truck already been there, the white Dodge? I don't. Okay. Did you ever go back down to the Circle K where the, where the white Dodge was uh, at some point after the arrest? No. Uh, Deputy Gonzalez, I'm showing you what's been marked for identification purposes only as defendant's exhibit number one. Can you review that and tell me just generally what it is? It believed to be a citation from DPS. Well, um, can you read the title of it? It says uh, Texas Department of Public Safety Property Inventory. So it looks like an inventory form, correct? Uh, yes, I'm not familiar with this. At this point. Uh, I don't know. I'll that's fine. Can you can you read that name that down there? That's uh, investigator Nuevo, that's my signature, yes. I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, that's a, that is my, my name, Investigator Nuevo Gonzalez. Okay, so now we know this is an inventory, property inventory from uh, the Department of Public Safety. Uh, Your Honor, objection is characterization of the form. He's calling it property inventory. And Well, I'll, I'll show it to the state. You can give it to the testimony once it's admitted, if it's, if it's admitted. <laughs> Are you no, no, being introduced into evidence? Yes. Final objection. Offering I'm offering it. All right. Defendant's Exhibit 1 is admitted into evidence at this time. Thank okay. You. So now I'm showing you what's been called uh, uh, Defendant's Exhibit Number 1. It's been admitted into evidence. And so the title of it is what, sir? The title is uh, Texas Department of Public Safety Property Inventory. And the subject of it is a 2015 Dodge Ram, correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, in here it states that... Uh, it was seized for criminal investigation, no inventory search conducted, correct? Correct. Okay, now, just out of curiosity, we know several names here. Ricardo Garcia is Lieutenant Ricardo Garcia. Correct. He, who was he? Uh, he was a lieutenant at the time at the substation. Uh, he was in charge of patrol at the time. Okay, and it looks like the tow truck driver was named Oscar Rivera. Correct. Now, who is Lorenzo El Santuro? who received these, I, this truck or whatever from Ricardo Garcia? That was a state trooper, I believe, at the gas station with, uh, with a vehicle at the time okay. while it was being transported to the substation. Okay, just because we couldn't tell. So Lorenzo Santuro is a DPS trooper. Correct. Okay, and can you explain to us why your signature is down here at the end of this inventory? So form? if I recall right, I believe when he arrived to the substation, somebody had to sign for it so it could be released to us. Okay. But uh, we were already at the substation at the time uh, before the truck arrived. So we had already transported Mr. Ortiz to the substation, the truck arrived, and that's when we signed off that we took possession of the vehicle. Okay, and wh who, who handed you this, say, this form and said, hey, take receipt of the truck? I can't recall what trooper was that asked me to sign for the, for the, the receipt. Okay. You don't remember if it was Santuro? Mm -mm. I don't recall. But it, you remember that it was a trooper? Yeah, I remember it was a trooper due to the form, and I remember that it arrived after the fact, after we arrived from with Mr. Ortiz. Okay. Uh, and then, did you do anything with the white no, Dodge? No, nothing. Just uh, pretty much some, make sure we, we received it, we, they, they uh, parked it, and, and that was it. Okay. And where it was parked, it's, I assume it's a lo uh, secure location. Correct. It's not on the curb or on the street no. or anything like that. Secure location, sir.
pass it with this one. No further questions, Your Honor. You may sit down. Thank you. Let's take our next witness. Um, and I guess with defense's consent, if this witness can be released from the rule, unless they're going to go back to Laredo. Because also he needs to go back to Laredo. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can be released, Your Honor. Okay. You're released. Excuse, you're sir. Well, you're free to go back to business. Well, he's going to Laredo. You're excusing. We're asking if you're okay with releasing him from the rule. Yeah, to, to excuse him. Yes. But we don't want him to stand here. But he's free to go back to Laredo. Right. You're released from uh, the subpoena. You're excused. Yeah. You may. You may. Do you want to approach the bench, sir? Yeah.
a legal matter. It shouldn't take too long, um, but it needs to be addressed before the next witness. So I'm going to go ahead and excuse you again for a few minutes and remind you not to discuss the facts of the case. Thank you. All right, to the jury. Yeah, I was told that they were ready. He's bringing all the, the evidence here. Right, well, go ahead and raise your right hand, sir. Yes, sir. You weren't sworn in earlier, right? Uh, you, you saw? Uh, yes, sir. On the first day. Was he here the first oh, yes, day as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, I saw you, right? I wasn't sure yes, you were. You're, you're, you're under the same oath then. Thank you. I don't know he was one of the six. Yes. <clears throat> All right. And uh, Mr. Perez, you may proceed. Yes. 
Yes, sir. Request by Mr. Pettis. Well, the request was for them to make their proffer, and then we would take him on voir dire to see what the chain was. They're going to offer this evidence through him and have yet to show a chain. And what we were proposing was do it out of the presence of the jury to speed it up. Yes. That's fine with us, Your Honor. Yeah. Then go ahead and proceed. Otherwise, there's no way. Please state your name for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Is mine on? No. Nope. No, you need it. Test, test, got it. Please state your name for the record. My name is Roberto M. Castillo. I am okay. employed with the Webb County Sheriff's Office, sir. What do you currently do at the Webb County Sheriff's Office? I'm a sergeant in the Criminal Investigation Division. Okay, and um, what are some of your duties as sergeant in the Criminal Investigation D Duty or Division? Uh, my duties include uh, supervising some of the other investigators, handling uh, cases myself, and I also assist with the property room and evidence management. Okay, when you say I, I assist with the property and the evidence management, what is it that you do there? For the most part, property is organized by my partner, a fellow investigator in the Criminal Investigation Division. Um, I will assist him by pulling evidence if need be, putting evidence back in, running evidence if it needs to be tested, things such as firearms, narcotics, weapons, things of that nature, sir. Are you the custodian of the evidence? In this particular situation, yes, sir. Does anyone else have access to that evidence? The evidence is stored in an access-controlled room, so no. Okay. Um, as to this evidence, does anybody aside from yourself have any uh, access to it? No, they do not, sir. This evidence was delivered to this building at approximately 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, and the uh, it was secured, and the key to the room that it was secured in was then passed over to the custody. Uh, I'm sorry, that the key to the room that was secured what? I'm that sorry. it was stored in was then passed over to the custody of the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Okay. Um, did you have any involvement in this case in particular aside from that? No. Okay. Um, is there any other deputy or officer that also has access to the, the, the evidence room? My partner, Investigator Nenke. Okay. Now, aside from you and Investigator Nenke, can anybody else go into that room? Into they the need to be room? escorted in, sir, for whatever be the reason. Okay, if they there, wanted to see evidence or familiarize themselves with evidence, they would be escorted in. Is there any type of log that you keep in order to keep track of that, that kind of involvement? No, sir, but the uh, room is under constant surveillance with a video system. Okay, can you describe the surveillance system? If this was the room, the door would be roughly where the doors are to enter and exit the courtroom, and the camera would be in the corner. So it's, it's, I'm assuming it's a wide-angle camera, and if I'm not mistaken, it captures both video and audio. Okay. Video for sure, but I believe it captures audio. That would capture the entry, entering and exiting of anybody that goes into that room. In addition, it is in our conference room of our substation. 80% of the time, I would say, majority of, percent, majority of the time, it is staffed with deputies. Okay, is there, um, with this case in particular, you had mentioned that you brought it up Sunday morning. Correct. Um, has this this evidence been in your possession the entire time, or have you have you had um, have you been the only one that has access to this this evidence? From the time I was subpoenaed, I believe last week on Tuesday or Monday, I uh, made myself familiar with the evidence, gathered it, organized it to the best of my abilities, labeled it if necessary, and as far as the custody goes hasn't been physically within my custody, it's been secured, passed over, like what I mentioned. When I released it, one key secured the room, and it was passed over to the care of the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Okay, if, if, um, if you needed to open a box and pull something out, what kind of uh, information would you, would you need in order to do that? Um, one such example was when I was asked to secure the weapon during the lunch recess. That seal has not been replaced. However, in situations where the evidence needs to be viewed or 
reviewed or what have you, uh, you can see various pieces of tape. So we would open it. It would be a controlled entrance. And the reason for the controlled entrance would be so that we could secure it properly. We would retape the entrance and then we would sign an initial to where if that seal was broken, the initialing and the, the dates and such wouldn't match up. That's the process. It's a I believe it's an accepted standard. Now let me ask you, you mentioned the gun earlier during the lunch, or your, you mentioned it during your testimony, but something about the lunch break. Correct. Um, were you present when that gun was was opened, or when the, the box was opened? I was present, as was a member of the Bear County Sheriff's Office and members of the court. Yes, okay. sir. And that was just for the safety of the court to make sure it was secure. Okay. Uh, by secure, I mean it unloaded. Okay. Uh, May I approach your honor? Yes, some of the, wind, the evidence. Sorry. Right. Okay, so. Permission for Mr. Castillo to step off the stand. You may, sir. I'll be out here with you. Mr. Yeah, so the first item I want you to grab for, for me is the HK handgun. Since you've taken uh, since you've taken custody of this property, and you mentioned earlier that that's been opened by yourself and the Web County or the Bear County Sheriff's Office to make the weapon secure, um, has anyone else had access to that weapon? No, they have not, sir. Okay. Um, would you mind opening that? And I'm gonna pull this out. What is this? Is it? That was in the in the box. Sir. Okay. I'm gonna mark this with one exhibit sticker. Thirty-seven. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Yeah. So that that item we're gonna mark is State's Exhibit Thirty-six. I'm not offering them yet, Your Honor. Just marking them. In addition to the gun, what else is in the box? One magazine, black in color. We're going to mark that one states exhibit 37. inside the box. Yeah, it's sealed though. We haven't opened it yet. Okay. Well, Your Honor, since our objection is going to apply to all the evidence from this witness, may I take him on board dire? At this point? Uh, I think so, because whatever objection I have to that, it's going to go to everything. I'm fairly certain. Yeah, I, I was I was just hoping that we, we would mark the evidence, because even when the prosecutor was asking questions, it was... That's when fine. The that's fine. That's one second. He was saying, this evidence, this evidence, this evidence, but it's not clear on the record as to what items those are. So no. I think if you have them labeled, at least... Yeah, yeah that, that's fine with us, Your Honor. Okay. That's okay. But they don't need to build no more testimony. <laughs> Casings. Casings. Envelope inside the gun box. Casings. 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 Casings.
cases. We have three items here. We're going to mark as 40, 41, 42. These are also projectiles or cases. Projectiles. Cases. Yes, these are casings. Case 40. This entire bag for now. This is the items that the items are recovered upon this person. The entire bag is 43, but we okay. yeah, read each item. Projectile 44, another projectile 45, and projectile 46. We're going to cover from under.
he was opening up the, the entire cast, which we're going to mark as State's Exhibit 15 with my line of questioning. So, Deputy Castillo, um, for the record, we've marked several items of physical evidence with different exhibit numbers. Is that correct? Correct. And anything that was opened here today uh, was opened by you. Is that also correct? Yes, sir. To the uh, some of these items were originally sealed, as you saw from the lab. Other items that had seals broken were broken in preparation for this trial. Okay, but everything that, that we labeled here today and brought out, you have, have put in, in, I guess, a box or storage to bring up here? Correct. And nobody else has had access to this or moved it or anything? Correct. Okay, um, we're gonna go one by one real quick, just to get each one on the record. But we have marked the h &K gun as state's exhibit 36, I'm going to show it to you just so you can verify that that's, that's what you brought with you today. After opening the box, I do see one H&K P2000 pistol with one 12 round magazine. Okay, and those are marked as state's exhibits 36 and 37? Correct. Well, there's a bag there. It's marked as State's Exhibit 38. From what you're seeing, do you know what that is? I do not, sir. Um, was sent to the Texas DPS Crime Lab. You might open it now. We're going to. Our Metro B for the For the record, that's State's Exhibit 37 that you're opening up.
Use them again, Mr. Alanis, Mr. Perez. Mr. Perez? Yes, you are. So we don't have to bring the jury in and then excuse them again. Are we ready for them to come in and go forward with what we addressed? Yeah, so, yeah the, the question is the end of the chain. The same thing we, we addressed here? Yes. As long as that's done? That's it. And, that, and then we're going to be done with this witness. Right. Okay. So then, uh, Mr. Medina? All right, Mr. Jury. You may proceed, sir. Um, I'm not sure if I asked you this when the jury was here. Can you please say your name? Roberto M. Castillo. And what do you currently do? I'm a sergeant with the Webb County Sheriff's Office, Criminal Investigation Division. Well, what are your duties at the Webb County Sheriff's Department? My duties in that division include uh, handling cases from time to time, assigning cases to my colleagues. I um, also assist in property management, evidence management. In, in this case, what role did you play? In this case, I was subpoenaed, I believe sometime last week. I was, requ uh, was requested of me to gather all the evidence which had been previously secured by my partner, uh, gather it, make sure it was all there, make sure there weren't any issues, and then transport it here to Bear County. Okay. Um, we've previously marked all the items that you well let me ask you this one um have since you got subpoenaed have these items um been in your custody and control they have okay were you the ones that brought all these items up from webb county Lurie? i was with the assistance of two deputies from the webb county sheriff's office okay so when did you get to san antonio with these items i got in at sunday at approximately 10 a.m where have these items been stored since you got here these items have been secured from that morning to this point in a, uh, a room, a couple of courtrooms down, I believe. Uh, it's a walkway down. Okay, and who has access to that room? Upon uh, leaving, I relinquished the key to uh, a sergeant with the Bear County Sheriff's Office, and I believe that key was given to court personnel. Okay, and, and aside from that, who, uh, was, do they give you back that key once you, you come back to the courtroom? They do not. Okay, when you need to request any evidence, um, do they give you the key and they go in with you? They do. I go through the court to get that key to get access to the room. Okay, back in Laredo, does everybody have access to this stuff? They do not. The property and evidence in Laredo is stored in a controlled access room. Access uh, to get into the station where that is stored, you need uh, card keys. It can be programmed and deprogrammed very easily at that point. Uh, to get into the actual property room, you need a, a code. That's what makes it controlled access. Okay, so we previously marked all these items as States Exhibits 36 through 64. Okay, is it your testimony here today that the items that I've marked as 30 States Exhibits 36 through 64 have been in your care and control since you got subpoenaed and brought up from the property room in Laredo to here today in the courtroom in Bear County? Yes, sir. I'll pass the witness. Um, Deputy Castillo. My name is Juan Perez, this is Raymond Fuchs, and we represent Mr. Ortiz. Okay, you, you mentioned that uh, 
with regards to the property room in Webb County, uh, that it's a controlled access area, correct? Correct. And then you said my partner has access. So we know you, Deputy Castillo, has access. Who else? To my personal knowledge, on a daily basis, it would be my partner, Investigator Nanke. We're the ones that uh, handle the processing of, of the evidence. Okay. What about uh, Ugarte? Ugarte, when he was employed with the Webb County Sheriff's Office, I believe he did have access as well, sir. Okay, so Ugarte is no longer employed with the Webb County Sheriff's Office? Correct. Okay. Uh, and would those be the only three people? I do not uh, give out the access, but those have been the people, in my personal knowledge, that have had access, yes. Okay, and when you say access, is it, is it you have a key or is it a code? It is a, a code that's entered on a numerical pad. The door is cl uh, closed by an electromagnetic switch, so you can't open it without entering the code first. And can uh, just your average deputy, if you're on the front desk or whatever, I don't know where you would be, say, hey, can I access this? Do they walk in with you? They would have to have a legitimate reason to want to, uh, to walk in with me. It's not a free-for-all, at which point they would be escorted under my care or my partner's care. Uh, whatever the business would be would be handled as promptly as possible, and then they would be uh, escorted out. And with regards to then the custody here in Bear County, once you transported it over here Sunday at 10, you said that you delivered it to a room here in the Justice Center on Dolorosa Street here? Yes, sir. Somewhere right behind here in the courthouse? In the courthouse? Uh, in this building, sir. In this building. And you secured it a into, a, a, I guess, a room with a key? Correct. And then what happened with that key, you said? That key was relinquished to uh, the uh, Bear County Sheriff's Officer that was assisting us for that morning. And I believe she turned that key over to the courts. To the court? Yes, sir. Uh, this uh, Today, when I needed to access the firearm, the court was in possession of that key. Oh, the court? Not, not the um, I'm sorry. No, no, sir. Not the judge. Correct. Uh, Mr. Cruz, I believe? A court officer. Uh, yes, correct. Okay. And do you know who that uh, sheriff's officer was, the Bear County one? Uh, Sergeant Rosie Johnson. Now, um, when you collected all these things, it was pursuant to a subpoena by the DA's office. Is that accurate? That is correct. Provided with a, a list of items that uh, I needed to organize in the fashion that you see here in front of the, the judge. And uh, do you know how, how this property got? In other words, did you take pr uh, possession of these items, whatever they might be, as they came into the property room? I did not. I was not assigned to Criminal Investigation Division at that time. Okay. In the, in this, the year of this case, I was not assigned to the, the, the division. <clears throat> so, uh, to your personal knowledge, your personal knowledge, other than what's written there somewhere, you don't know who took possession at the property room of any one of these items? At this moment, I could not answer that question. I would have to refer to the labels. So you, you wouldn't personally, again, from personal knowledge, know how they got into the property room? I mean, general personal knowledge would be that uh, the protocols and procedures we well, follow as, as may, deputies. May, yes, sir? I know routine and habit, and I know protocols and all that. I'm, so, I'm talking about personal knowledge. You were not there when, let's say, item number 37, if it's in there, you were not there in, to see it come into the property room. You, you lack personal knowledge of that. Correct. No further questions, Your Honor. Real briefly, Your Honor. Uh, you mentioned labels, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, we what did, store, quick, I guess, uh, what do these labels contain? Um, the evidence, for the most part, is stored. Firearms are stored in cardboard boxes, and rifles are stored in cardboard boxes, et cetera, et cetera. They have pre-printed lines. It's not just generic. Example, brown paper bags you would find at your local grocer. Those lines have uh, basic information 
one would enter as they recover the evidence, date, time, description, location, and more importantly, the officer that seized it. Well, let me ask you this. If someone goes in and grabs an item and wants to inspect it, what are the policies and procedures that you follow to ensure the, the, the item is the same item that was recovered? The policies and procedures that I follow is that the integrity of the evidence is protected at all times. First and foremost, we would issue latex gloves for the protection of the individual as well as the protection of the evidence. If there's any seals that are present, uh, for example, as the case of the firearm, you will see uh, red tape. Those, those constitute a seal. Um, those seals would be broken in our presence. Um, evidence would be examined. Whatever needed to be done would be done, at which point the evidence would be resealed in the same fashion with the tape uh, marked evidence. And then to ensure that uh, we know that that new seal has not been broken or compromised, we initial and date over the seal. So you have the tape and then you have the initials overlapping. So if they were to rip that tape off, uh, and let me add to that, this tape is very, very thin. I mean, sometimes we rip it as we're just pulling it off of the uh, self-adhesive little backing. So it's very, very delicate tape. It's specifically made for, for sealing evidence. And if it was tampered with in any which way, obviously the initials, anything with lines would not match. Okay, and does every piece of property, from your knowledge, in this case, have those identifying features? That I saw, yes, sir. Okay. Um, we opened a few items here today prior, prior from the jury coming in. Um, was that done to keep the integrity of the items um, that you had? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, has anyone else opened those? Like, if anything there is open, has anyone else opened that? Anything that's open was, uh, may have been opened by myself. Uh, and one such example was prior to bringing the firearm into the court for... Well, Your Honor, we had a check, Your Honor, him yeah. testifying to items not in the evidence. What's the uh, description of the items? Oh. We asked the jury to disregard, Your Honor. Um, well, the first well, exhibit one was... Second, one second. Um, the jury will disregard the last statement by the witness at this time. We asked for a mistrial. Uh, that's the... You know. Um, for the safety, uh, what? Uh, let's just say if an item was open today, okay, um, what would have happened if it wasn't opened by by any of us or for the courtroom? If it had to be opened outside of the court. Well, it was opened by me and made sure that it wasn't tampered with prior to that. And what do you do to ensure that? Make sure it's closed. <laughs> okay. Make sure I can't easily open it. I mean, any seals that are visible, make sure that those are still intact. And is it your testimony that all the items that you've brought here today um, have met that standard of integrity of nobody else tampering with that evidence? They have. I have not seen any alterations from the way I transported them. Okay. Pass the witness, Your Honor. But Deputy Castillo, uh, let's say something's checked in to the property room by someone else and then it needs to go out and be tested. Someone comes and checks it out, right? To the best of my knowledge, personal knowledge, yes, sir. That is our system. Okay. And uh, if it's open, someone's supposed to initial it, right? Correct? Correct. Okay. Now, just getting back to the issue, and that is that you did not personally check these things in, I any number of things. Uh, into the property room where, where you're the person that takes it in and puts it into the property room. You did not do that with these items? No, sir, I did not. Okay, that's it. And, and if any of these items were taken out and sent out to the lab, you did not send them out? No, I did not. And then if it came back from the lab, you did not take it in? In reviewing and preparing for this case, I, I did see some supplements that I did create where um, I did receive some of this evidence back from the crime lab that we sent items tested to. What that constitutes is when I show up, usually for evidence drop-off, Personnel at that lab will say, hey, we have some evidence ready for return. Would you like to take custody of it at that time? 
provided I have space if it's large items and you know I'm going straight back to the substation as opposed to into the field for a field interview or something like that I will take custody of, this, of take custody of this evidence promptly return to the substation lock it back in our property room and then create a small supplement just documenting what I just described okay. I saw well, I saw two we're supplements we're where I received No further questions, Your Honor. Real quickly, how, how long have you been the custodian of the property there at Webb County, of all property at Webb County? I believe my memory served me correctly uh, two years. Okay. Uh, I think I believe I got transferred in September. Prior to that, was there um, someone else that, that also had that role? Um, my memory served me correctly. It was uh, Investigator Nanke and Investigator Ugarte. Okay, and you had mentioned Ugarte is no longer with Webb County, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, would it be safe to say that you assumed his role when you got moved to the property manager? When I was laterally transferred to this position that I hold now, uh, he did uh, take me under under his wing, so to speak, for about a week and showed me ins and outs, how to drop off evidence and things of that nature. So yes, that would be safe to assume. So uh, the, the only thing that changed was the person taking care of the evidence and not the evidence itself? Correct. So in simple terms, you inherited the evidence? Yes, sir. That would be the best way to describe it. Okay. Uh, no further questions. Nothing further, but uh, we would. Uh, nothing further. Thank you, Your Honor. Not yes, you're not released from the rule yet, uh, Mr. Castillo. You're still subject to the rule and uh, be on standby in case you're recalled as a witness. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Let's take call our next witness, please. Oh, Brandon Stern. Good afternoon. You're under the same oath you took on Monday. Thank you. Say your name for the record. <clears throat> My name is Brandon Stern. And Mr. Stern, what do you currently do? I'm a deputy for the Webb County Sheriff's Office of Mental Health Division. Okay, how long have you been a deputy with the Webb County Sheriff's Department? A little over four years. And, and get a little closer to the mic. Is that better? Yeah, and you can speak up a little more. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Stern, um, uh, remind me, how long have you been with the Web County Sheriff's Department? A little more than four years. Okay. When did you start working with the Web County Sheriff's Department? My hire date was August 13th, 2018. Okay, and do you know more or less the dates of when these events occurred in question? Um, no, I don't remember. Okay, um, how long were you on the job when these things happened? I was about three weeks. Okay, what, what were your duties at that time, three weeks into the job? So I just I just been sworn in about a week prior. Um, so for that particular case, I was I was tasked to uh, to help Investigator Ugarte and Investigator Denke with evidence collection. Okay. Um, how did you help Investigator Denke and Ugarte with evidence collection? What was your role exactly? My my, my role was basically uh, to learn and to watch what they did, ask questions as as we went along, and um, basically we would go piece by piece, evidence one at a time, and. They would tell me what they were doing, and I would just help them gather the evidence. 
did you observe um, both or either Nenke and Ugarte recover pieces of evidence for this case? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you participate in the recovery of that evidence as well? Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember how many crime scenes you helped process? Three crime scenes. Okay. Um, as part of your training, because at the time you were training, is that correct? Yes. As part of your training, can you explain to ladies and gentlemen of the jury what it was that the investigators told you to do when you come across a scene like this in evidence collection? So the, 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 the first scene I, I arrived at, um, I met with Investigator Garte and Captain Calderon, and they, they had told me that I was going to be helping Investigator Garte with evidence collection. And in speaking to Investigator Garte, he kind of explained to me, uh, first, his pictures, we document everything, that we, we take pictures of everything that we see, and then we go from the from outside of the, of the scene inside. And then once we get to the center of the scene, we kind of figure as the center of the scene best as we can, that we collect evidence from the inside out. Okay. Did you do that in these three scenes that you mentioned earlier? Yes. Did you take photos? No. Okay. Were you there when photos were being taken? Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember what the scenes looked like in each, in all three of these crime scenes? Yes. Do you remember what evidence was recovered at these three scenes? Yes. Okay. Um, now, um, let, let's go to the first scene. Um, do you remember what you did at that first scene? Yes. Can you explain to ladies and gentlemen, the jury, what it was exactly that you did? So, like I said earlier, I had I arrived there, spoke to investigator Ugarte, spoke to Captain Calderon. They told me what my duties were going to be. So from there on, I stuck basically stuck to Ugarte's hip, and he walked me through everything he did, and I helped him as much as I could. So we first got there, we started taking pictures, documenting everything that we could as best we as best as we could, and then once we got to the center of the crime scene, um, we we marked everything that we thought was evidence important to the scene, and then we took pictures of everything that we marked, and then once everything was marked and, and photographed, we would gather the item, put it into the bag, label label the bag, and move on to the next item. Do you remember the scene of this, or the location of this first scene? Yes. And uh, where was this? That was on 255, Highway 255. Okay, is that in, in Webb County? Yes, North Webb County, yes. Is that in the radio? No. Okay. Um, you mentioned a, a labeling of the bag. What kind of information goes on that label? So the way, the way I was instructed, the way I was taught was, first, first and foremost, what it is, and then second, where where it was located, what time it was located, and then a case number, and then the initials of the individual that was um, collecting the evidence, and then that that bag is closed, and placed into a larger bag where the evidence is, is held. Okay. So at the first scene, was that done with the physical evidence that was recovered? Yes. Okay. Uh, permission to approach, Your Honor. You go. I'm going to show you a few pieces of evidence. Now, for the record, so we can keep track of what we see. I'm going to mark this envelope as State's Exhibit 65. Okay. Do you recognize State's Exhibit 65? Yes. Okay. Can you, um, based on what you're seeing, how do you, how are you able to identify that, that uh, this exhibit, State's ex Exhibit 65? So, Webb County Sheriff's Office, we have a, 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 a label printing machine that, that prints out basically the information that I said earlier, like um, what it is, case number, time and date. Just general, like a, a description of what the item is. Okay, and is that label uh, unique to the Webb County Sheriff's Office? This one, yes, it is. Like you'd be able to identify this, that being Webb County Sheriff's Office. 
slavery. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And you mentioned earlier that there were some items that are placed um, to keep the integrity of the evidence, you know, uh, where it was located, the date and time. Is that what was done on this envelope? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to take out what's inside States Exhibit 65. I'm going to show you States Exhibits 47, 48, and 49. Okay. Do you recognize these three items? Yes. Okay. Do you remember recovering those items or assisting in the recovery of said items? Yes. Okay. To be clear, when you reco recovered these items, were you the one that sent them off to be tested? No, I was not. Okay. Who does that? That would have been Investigator Ninke or Investigator Ugarte. Okay. But you do remember recovering these items from this, the, the second scene? Yes. Okay. I'm going to return these items and place them back in States Exhibit 65. You know, you're, at this time, the state would like to admit into evidence states' exhibits. Forty-seven, forty-eight, and forty-nine. I'm handing over to defense counsel for any objection. Forty-seven, forty-nine. Waiting for defense for any objections. This time we won't offer forty-eight. Any objections to forty-seven and forty-nine? Is sixty-five just the envelope? Yeah, it's just what it came in. Just for the record's purposes, when I was showing them the envelope, since it has all the data. Yes, sir. Uh, Deputy Stern. My name is Floyd Pettis, and I represent Mr. East. Okay, first of all, did you write uh, police reports to memorialize the events that happened at this numerous crime scenes? No, sir, I did not. Okay. Do you have training in report writing? Yes. And the purpose to write reports is to put your memory to paper? Yes, sir. Okay. And you're telling us that in this four, or at least in this crime scene at Jeffries, you did not write a police report. From the crime scene from Jeffries Road? Yes, sir. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. And. Go to objection. This is from 255. The second 255. Yeah. Jeffries, is it? Am I correct? No. Two, sorry. What, what's the location here? 
Okay, but let me ask you this. Um, I, when you say, who was the, the crime scene, the chief crime scene investigator on this scene? That would have been Investigator Ugarte. Ugarte. And so, uh, I'm just trying to figure this out, okay? Uh, first of all, where are your initials anywhere on these documents? There, there are none. They're not. Do you see any initials on there? Yes. And whose initials would you say those are? If you know for a fact. From no, I, I don't know for a fact. Okay. So you don't know who put these items in these bags? No, sir. Okay. And this happened back in 2018. And for example, this item number 47, you're telling these 12 people that you went to four crime scenes and that you remember uh, it was it Ugarte or Nike? I'm sorry. I went to three crime scenes, sir. Okay, let's say three. Uh, you're, you're telling this jury that you have personal knowledge of where this item was collected out on that field. Is that what you're telling these 12 people? Yes. Okay. And, and how do you know it was this item if you didn't initial it? Just based off my memory. <laughs> That's where you're going to go off? Yes, sir. Okay. And if we go to... Exhibit number 49, uh, are, are you telling this jury that, and you said, again, forgive me, but I don't remember right now, Ugarte was with you? Yes. Okay. You're saying to this jury and, and all of us that as Ugarte is leaning down, you're right there tied at the hip to him throughout this entire crime scene. Is that what you're telling us? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, we've looked through your reports, and, and would you be surprised that your name isn't mentioned anywhere? As being at this crime scene, would I would I be surprised? Yes. Um, no, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. And at this time that this things are collect being collected, you basically have no training in crime scene investigation. Um, I have a training in my police academy of evidence collection. Okay. Um, and with regards to the item inside, let's say forty nine. How do you know that this is the item that you collected there? Uh, other than the someone else's unknown initials, uh, how do you know that this is the item that was on the ground? Are your markings on it? No, sir, they're not. Uh, does this look like any other spent bullet projectile? It, it could, yes. Okay. So from even, even this item, from your personal knowledge, you cannot tell us that this bullet fragment, this one inside this bag, is the one that was collected out of the scene where you were? No. Okay. And also, uh, you don't know where it's been since the time that you saw it, if it is even that one. In other words, you don't know if it went to a lab. No, I do not, no. Okay. We'd object to relevance at this time, Your Honor, and also to the chain of custody. Were you offering 65 also? Yes, Your Honor. We're going to go ahead and offer 65 now at this at, at this point as well, considering the questioning from the defense counsel. Have you shown 65? Also? I'm going to show you again State's Exhibit 65. We've been talking about labels. Can you read what's on that label in terms of the description of the items inside? No, it's really faded. Um, it says deformed bullet from brain, copper jacket from hair, copper jacket from under the seat. I can't, I can't read that word. So, and, and uh, what date does it have there? What's the corresponding date? 9 13 of 2018. Okay. So, and these items came from this bag, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and again, you, you didn't send them out to the lab? No. Okay. How is it that you remember so well what you did that day without writing a report? And, and at this time, State Officer State's Exhibit 65. Sorry, that's what you mentioned. If I may, you are. May you approach also? Yeah. That's fine. <laughs>
I showed you it was marked the state's exhibit 65, right? Yes. This green sticker, is that one of yours? I'm not familiar with it, no. Okay, which one is yours? That'll be the white one. Okay, what is the, again, what is the purpose of, of writing this information down and labeling it on a package like this? Just to identify what's, in th what's inside the package. Okay, uh, how many um, times have you come across a scene and there are items that, you know, arguably could be, that are plain, that, that don't have an identifying mark, that are generic? Like, let's say a piece of candy, you know, um, if you just found a peppermint and I brought you just that peppermint and I asked you, is this the same one you found that day? How would you be able to tell me if I just showed you the, the peppermint and not a package like this? I, um, I wouldn't be able to. Okay. So this is the reason why you put these things on the label? Yes. To be able to identify those specific items you picked up that day? Yes. Okay. And again, you witness these items being picked up. Yes. How is it that you remember so well what items were picked up? <clears throat> well, it was a very, it was a very big case. It was um, pro some some things I'll probably never forget, just because just how how early in my career this this case happened. You know, just uh, barely being introduced to law enforcement as a full time law enforcement officer. This is probably the first case I've ever assisted on, ever worked on, so it's it's just um, tattooed in my brain, the things that I did that day. You had mentioned earlier, but how, how long were you on the job at this point? Three weeks. Okay. Had you investigated any other case of this magnitude? None. Okay. Um, and you remember specifically the three, the three crime scenes you did go to? Yes. Again, Your Honor, we're going to rearrange the, the items in State's Exhibit 65. Specifically, it was 47 and 49. And 48. Yes. For, so for the record, they're offering 40, 47, 49, and 65. Not, not 48. Not. The witness or the witness? Yes. yes. Okay. Only because I couldn't tell from over there. Okay. Yes, uh, the DA asked you, uh, do, do you recognize a label of some sort? Yes. That is your label. Or, not, you know, not your label, but what, like, what label do you recognize? The, like the Webb County Sheriff's Office label? Well, they're all going to have Webb County Sheriff's Office label. What, what do you recognize about this, la this item 65 that's unique? That's unique. Um, yeah. I, I recognize this as being the, the the label that, when things are are put into evidence, that the investigator got there, investigator think it, print out and put on items. Okay. N n none of the other labels. So this label you don't recognize. No, no, sorry, I do not. I asked you earlier about this label and that writing. Do you know whose writing that is? No, sorry, I do not. There's more writing here. Do you recognize that writing? No. Okay. This initial on this green label, do you recognize that? No. This SMD three eleven nineteen, do you recognize that? No, sir. Okay, so so again, I'm just trying to figure out. Other than a generic <coughs> barcode uh, that is fairly legible, honestly. Okay. Uh, um, what is unique about this envelope that you particularly recognize? Yeah. It's just generic labels, right? I mean, honestly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing unique. I mean, for example, if the person that that is, is uh, that initial, I'm going to just show it to the jury real quick. So someone signs like that. If I show it to him, he goes, "Yeah, man, that's my that's my sign." You see how he could say that's my sign? Yes. To that guy, but to you, nothing about this envelope is unique, right? It's just another evidence envelope, correct? Yes. Again, Your Honor, we're going to object that uh, at this point through this witness, maybe through Dr. or whoever, make it, it's, it'll be relevant, but at this point it's not relevant, and he doesn't start the chain of custody, Your Honor. That's our objection.
Your Honor, the state responded, it goes to the weight, not the credibility of the evidence. It has been established that he was the one that was there to recover the evidence. I don't object to arguments like that from the jury who wants to argue that. Mr. Pettit just did her analysis response. Oh, okay. Forty-seven, forty-nine, and sixty-five will be admitted into evidence at this time. Permission of public, Your Honor. State's Exhibit forty-seven and forty-nine. Yeah. Can you the elbow? Or? Yeah, we got this thing working. Mm -hmm. States Exhibit 49. 47? 47, I'm sorry. <clears throat> now, defense asked you if you were able to identify that just by looking at it, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you, it's going to mark the States Exhibit 49. Same item you were asked earlier if you were able to identify it, correct? Yes. And, you know, and to be clear, th these initials are not yours, right? Sorry. Just put in the middle, Josh. I'm trying to figure out which way I'm going. All right. Those are not yours? No, they're not. Okay. Do you want me to place these? Yeah, that's fine. I got these tickets over there, too. All right. Moving on, Deputy Stern. Um, we had talked that you were at the second crime scene, correct? Yes. Okay, do you remember... Or you know what? We'll move, we'll move past that. Let's. Did you go to a third crime scene? Wait, when you say third crime scene, third crime scene to me? Or... Or I guess, okay, let's go in chronologic order. Okay. What's the second crime scene that you went to? On Highway 255. Okay. Do you happen to know the name of that victim? Mrs. If you don't know, that's fine. I, yeah, it's still my mind, yes. Okay. Um, what was the condition? How did you find the victim when you first got there? Are, may we approach again, Judge? Yeah, please. Come on.
based on the on the bench conference, Mr. Davila, are you passing the witness subject to recall? Sure, we're going to ask that the line of questioning be paused at this moment and that uh, he be still on the roll, but allowed to uh, be recalled if, if we need him as a witness. But at this time, we're going to ask that we're going to pass him. Passing subject to recall. Are, are there any uh, cross examination questions at this time? No, no, not right now, Your Honor. So long as he still available to us yes. later. Uh, so you're excused for now, sir, but you're still uh, to, uh, to be on standby, and you're still under the, the rule. You cannot be in the courtroom or, or watch any music concert regarding this case. But thank you. You're excused for now. All right. The state want to call their next witness, please? We approach, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, while we wait for the next witness, uh, there, there, there'll be a few minutes. Um, I'm going to give you a, about a 15-minute break this time for sure. Last time was a little longer than anticipated. Uh, and I'll just remind you not to discuss, discuss the facts of the case or watch the news accounts regarding right, this case.
Court is back in session. All right. Where are the defense attorneys? Well, you may be seated for now. They have their next witness already? So. Yes. Okay. We'll go ahead and bring the jury in now. All right, to the jury. Captain Federico Calderon. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. You're under the same oath you took Monday. You may take the stand. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can you please state your name for the record? Federico Calderon. And uh, how are you employed? I'm employed by the Webb County Sheriff's Office. In what capacity? I'm a captain at the Webb County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been uh, with the Webb County Sheriff's Office? Since 2005. Are you a certified peace officer? Yes, I am. How long have you been a captain? I've been a captain since 2015. Can you please scoot up and speak loudly into the mic, yes. please? I've been a captain since 2015. What are your current duties? My current duties, I oversee information technology, radio communications, and public safety technology, and border security operations. I want to take you back to 2018. Yes, sir. Do you remember that year? Yes, I do. Specifically, do you remember the month of September 2018? Yes, I do. And more specific than that, do you remember the day of September the 3rd of 2018? Yes, I do. Where were you employed on that day? At the Webb County Sheriff's Office. And what uh, assignments or what division did you belong to? I was the supervisor for the Criminal Investigation Division. And as part of that division, what were your responsibilities on September the 3rd of 2018? On September 3rd, 2018, we received a... What were your duties on September the 3rd, 2018? My duties a, were investigating crimes against persons, crimes against properties, uh, crimes that got reported to the Webb County Sheriff's Office. Does that include murders? Yes, it does. Okay. Did you receive any reports of any bodies, lifeless bodies, in Webb County on September the 3rd of 2018? Yes, we did. Were you on duty at that time? Yes, I was. Okay, so uh, tell us how you received the report, how you got involved in this case. We received a phone call, a 911 phone call of a lifeless body in north western Webb County and off of uh, Jeffrey's Road. Where's the big map? One second. And the patrol division responded and called out the Criminal Investigation Division, which is when I show up. You said on which road? 
Jeffrey's Road. And where is Jeffrey Road located? Is uh, approximately how many miles from the city of Laredo? Approximately 20 plus around there. Would it be fair to say that is in a rural area? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. Can I mark this? with this exhibit yes I am and are, are you familiar with what it depicts yes I am and uh, is it accurate yes it is and basically what is exhibit 66 exhibit 66 is a map of the locations of the bodies that were discovered during my investigation and it's you are the lead investigator in this case in the case against Juan David Ortiz is that for the Webb County Sheriff's Office for the yes web. this investigation was a joint investigation correct with what other agency the Department of Public Safety is that DPS yes uh, spe more specifically the Texas Ranger Division the Texas Ranger Division so you you guys ran a joint investigation that is correct and as part of this investigation how many murders were you tasked in investigating? Four. Can you give me the locations of those four murders? We had one off of uh, Jeffrey's Road, one off of uh, Farm to Market Road 255, and two off of IH 35. Specifically? The 22 mile marker and the 15 mile marker. Okay. The geographical map here is, could be fairly described as a satellite image? Correct. And this will assist the jury in orienting themselves on the geographic location around Laredo, Texas. North of Laredo, Texas, correct. Where these crimes occurred. Yes, sir. So I'm just going to hold this. Your Honor, this is the map towards the jury so the jury can see. Uh, we're going to offer this into evidence. 66, uh, state's exhibit 66 is admitted into evidence at this time. Thank you, you Your Honor. I apologize. Uh, now, if you can swivel around. Yes, sir. On September the 3rd of 2018, you were on duty. Correct. I was called on to, into duty, yes. You are called into duty. And uh, what was that call regarding? A deceased person okay what was the location of that deceased person the location was off of Jeffrey's Road where that yellow marker is Can that yellow thumb tag point at it yes sir right here okay did you have the occasion to arrive at that scene I personally arrived at that crime scene yes okay were you able to identify the person who, the deceased person at that crime scene? Eventually, yes. Okay. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury the name of that person? Melissa Ramirez. Can you write her name down there? Where you found her? Where she was found? Where she was found. Right. Okay. Just gonna leave that there for now. My pen, please. I'm sorry. Thanks.
Okay, so walk us through. You you responded to Jeffrey's Road, correct? Correct. What was your role in this investigation? I was the supervisor for the Criminal Investigation Division, and we investigated the deceased person. It was a death investigation. Was this uh, inside or outside the city limits of Laredo? Outside the city limits of Laredo. But within the county of Webb? Inside the county of Webb, correct. So it fell within the sheriff's jurisdiction? That is correct. So what is the first thing you do when you get to the crime scene? We start processing the scene, looking for evidence and taking pictures. Okay. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what it is that you saw and tell us what time you arrived and what you observed. I arrived sometime after, I don't recall exactly, it might have been 8 a.m. Actually, no, it was, may I refer to my note and I can tell you exactly when I arrived? Would it help you refresh your memory if you look at yes. your notes? Yes, sir. Shortly after noon. Okay, shortly after 12 noon. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, take us back to that day. Take the jury back there and, and tell us what it is that you did as a lead investigator. We began photographing the crime scene. We began looking for any evidence that was left behind. Uh, we photographed the body, the injuries to the body. We call out the medical examiner and we picked up any evidence that we later sent off to the lab for processing, like shell casings and anything she might have had in her hand. Let's be more specific. Yes, sir. Describe for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury the, the actual location, the road. The It's a dirt road. It's a dirt road. It's a dirt road off of a farm to market road, and they're not very heavily populated. There's not many people out there. Okay. So it's a, it's a desolate area. Correct. Where is the body located in proximity to the dirt road? On the side of the road, right by the fence line. Okay. Explain to the ladies and gentlemen, the jury, the condition of the person when you arrived. And I'm talking about how they were dressed, what position they were in, all the details. Wearing shorts, no shoes, uh, face down in the dirt, clutching a bag of M&Ms, and apparent uh, head trauma was seen from, from where we were standing before the medical examiner turned over the body. You could see head trauma, and there were shell casings around the body. There were shell casings? Correct. How many shell casings? <laughs> we recovered two that day. Two shell casings that day. Why do you say that day? We went out the day after and continued looking to canvas the area and we recovered a third shell casing. So from crime scene of Melissa Ramirez, first day, two shell casings, second day, one shell casing. That's correct. Uh, Do personally do with the evidence? While we're investigating, we mark items of interest and we have our uh, CSI officers photograph and recover it. Evidence technician, CSI officer. CSI officers. Crime scene investigator. Crime scene investigators. Correct. At that time, who was your crime scene investigator? We had. Deputy David Nenke and also Mr. Ugarte, Jose Ugarte. What is Deputy Nenke's status today, right now? Right now he's injured. He recently had surgery. What is Ugarte's status at this moment? He works for another agency at, in Laredo. He works for the Texas A&M University Police Department. Nevertheless, they were charged with processing 
through their CSI uh, duties the crime scene, correct? Correct. And you, as the one of the lead investigators, uh, directed them to the evidence that ultimately was photographed and collected. That is correct, yes. May I approach the witness?
was just Captain. I'm going to ask you to look at States Exhibit 67 through 83 that I have marked. Yes, sir. Have you had the opportunity to look at these photos? Yes, I have. Before this? Yes, I have. Do these photos accurately depict what is contained within this photo? That is correct, yes. On that specific day that you arrived at that area in Webb County? That is correct, yes. And uh, have they been altered in any, any way? No. <coughs> Uh, Captain Calderon, so uh, what's depicted in States Exhibit 67 through 83, you personally uh, observed all this? I was there, yes, sir. I personally observed that. No, sir. No, sir. No. All right, States Exhibit, so was it 67 through 83 are being offered? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, 67 through 83 is being offered by the state. They'll be admitted into evidence at this time.
Defense Exhibit 67. Where we're, we're what we're seeing here. You're seeing Jeffrey's Road and Melissa's body off to the right, mid road. And that's over right over here, is that the That's correct, yes. So her her body was discovered by who? By some of the people who live in the community that are out there, the little ranch homes that are out there. Okay. I'm going to show you stage 68. What color of the top was she wearing? Ten. And shorts? Black. Was she wearing shoes? No, sir. You testified that you personally observed casings? Yes, sir. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury some of the characteristics of those casings. They were 40 caliber shell casings from a, from a weapon um, brand being Federal Cartridge. How do you know they were Federal Cartridge? I saw them. And when you saw them, are they, do they, how do you, how do you know they're Federal, not Winchester? I'm familiar with different brands of ammunition, and it's an ammunition brand I'm familiar with. Okay. And does it say federal on the case? FC or federal. Okay. How many cases did you see? We saw two. I'm going to show you states exhibit 83. Mm -hmm. What are, what are we seeing here? You're seeing a shell casing that we found the second day, the day we went out there the second time to canvas the area. It's that a 40, right 40 caliber shell casing, yes sir. How far from the body was this casing? Not far at all, feet, a couple feet maybe. Was it to the right or the left of the body? If, just if you remember. I don't remember where that one was in relation to the body. It was, I remember it was away from the body, but I can't tell if it was right or left. Okay. States Exhibit 77. That is a picture of some of the blood and what's marked with marker number two is another 40 caliber shell casing. Was that casing similar to casing number one? Yes, sir, it was. And it belonged to what type of weapon? A forty caliber weapon. And is that the casing right there? Yes, sir, that's the casing right there. And what was the location of this casing in proximity to the body? Same, couple feet away. Very close. I'm going to show you States Exhibit 79. What do we see? What are we looking at here? The tent, mark number three, the yellow tent, is showing the 40 caliber shell casing that we found, the second one we found that day. And that's it right there? That is it right there, yes, sir. So, a total of how many casings did you were recovered from this scene? Three, sir. Three? All of them being 40 caliber. 40 caliber Smith and Wesson. Federal. Federal cartridge, yes. Federal cartridge. Yes. Ammunition brand. Okay. States Exhibit 80. What, what are we looking at here? We marked what appeared to be some sort of uh, drug. 
with marker number four, that white rock with a little plastic around it or next to it. In your training and experience, what would that be? It looks like crack. Okay. Two. What is this? Some tire imprints left by the scene near the body. Did you conduct any analysis? Being the, the one of the head investigators, did you try to obtain an analysis of these tire tracks? Yes, we did. We asked for the tire tracks to be photographed and casted. Casted. Yes. Sir. Were you successful in, in pulling a, a readable task uh, cast? Not myself, but yes, it was done. Okay, the cast was done. Investigation of these murders. How many casts were taken from how many crime scenes? I recall two casts from two crime scenes. Okay. On the first crime scene, were you able to make a match with any vehicles? I don't recall. Okay. On crime scene two, uh, or in, in any of the other crime scenes, were you able to? Was there a match able to be made? Yes, there was. Okay. So on crime scene one, was there a match? Successful match made. I don't recall. I'd have to review my notes for crime scene. Wanna, do you want to review your notes on, on that? Never mind. I'll, 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 I'll withdraw that question. <laughs> do you recall one of, one of the cats uh, breaking uh, and being un, untestable? Yes. The very first one we made. The very first one you made. What is this? Another set of uh, tire tracks. So this would have been the first the first set of casts would have come from this crime scene, correct? The first set of casts would have come from that crime scene, correct? So ultimately, that cast would have broken. Yes. So you were unsuccessful in making this cast uh, readable. Correct on the first one, yes. The second cast was done when? For the, this crime or scene the, or? The, the, the other cast of the other crime scene was done when? The day we discovered that body. Would you have remembered the date on that second body? Sept, uh, same month of the uh, September 13th in the morning. September 13th? Yes. Do you remember the name of that victim? Claudine Loera. Your Honor, the state intends to publish uh, photos of the victim that are graphic in nature, and I know that uh, uh, there's live stream footage that's taking place uh, for the benefit of the media in case they want to take any measures uh, with these photos that I'm about to publish. I would like the court to. Yeah, the, uh, I, I just ask you to use some discretion on how what you publish. So the following items are of the victim in this case and how you found her. Correct. Correct. Okay. And this first image, it's the one that you said. When you got there, she was found face down? That's correct. That's what she looked like when we found her. And that was Exhibit 76, whatever? State's Exhibit 76. What are we 
we see here. Same scene from another angle, the side shot. The direction of the the blood is, is that a slope, or why is, is it pulled in that manner? It's a it's a slight slope downward toward the fence. Did you have the occasion to approach the body? Yes, I did. And based on your training, how many years at this time were you an uh, officer? In 2018? 13, 14, 13. 13 years? 13. And at that time, had you had the occasion to see people who uh, had been murdered or killed? Yes, I have. Okay. Did you attempt to see if, the, if she had suffered any injuries and where those injuries were located? Without disturbing the body, yes, we looked to see what we could find before the medical examiner got there. Okay. Based on your training and experience, what could you determine? That she had been, that she had head trauma, and it appeared that she had been shot. Shot in the head. Correct. Once the, you, you just mentioned the medical, exa medical examiner, once the medical examiner arrived, what uh, did they, do they normally move the body? All the time. They turn the body over, feel the cranium, feel the scalp, and feel for all the bullet holes, and, and give us information that we can use in our investigation. So did they do that there while you were there? Yes. Okay. So the medical examiner got there, and you just testified, they turn, frequently turned the body, mm -hmm. then they turned... Melissa over. Yes, it did. Okay. What do we What did you determine when they turned her over? She had a trauma to her head that appeared to have been caused by gunshots. Okay. That was 73 for the record? 73 for the record. I'll show you States Exhibit 70. What did she have clinched in her hand? A bag of M&Ms. States Exhibit 70. And States Exhibit 71. That bag of M&Ms was being held by her in a tight fist? Correct. In your training and experience, what does that indicate to you? I've seen that before when people have head trauma before they die. What, what does that mean? Before they die, when people get shot or when they have head trauma, sometimes they clench their hands and they stay clenched. that was gathered from this crime scene amounted to what? what? What was actually gathered? Everything that was combed or? Everything that was combed that you see there, the shell casings uh, and what wasn't combed as well, the M&Ms and everything she had on her. Okay. Uh, okay, did she have any personal belongings on her? No cell phone or anything like that, no. No? So she had no personal belongings on her? No. An ID? No ID. How were you able to determine her identity? Eventually, she had her fingerprints uh, checked and they came back to her. Okay. <coughs> Based on the 911 call when her body was seen, that were you able to gather any information to begin your investigation. 
from the 911 calls, yes. And what information was that? That there was a pickup truck that was near the area of the body, very close, and the person who saw that followed it and got the license plates of it and reported that to us. Okay. And tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what did you do with that information and the license plate of that person? We tracked down the owner of the vehicle and we conducted an investigation, interviewed him, went to the house, and we actually conducted the interview at the house of the his family who was with him. Um, we checked his room, we checked his truck. Uh, we, we did anything we do in a normal police investigation. Did you, uh, ha did you, as part of that investigation, did you request any assistance from any state or other federal agencies to determine or get the license plate reader? From, since the family or the, the person who had seen the truck took a picture of it, that was something that we could run okay. through normal means. Okay. <laughs> run the license plate and it comes back to the owner and the address. So you found the individual and you all brought him in? Yes, sir. When I say you all, that is you and the Texas Ranger? That is correct. Okay. Uh, you conducted a search of his home? Yes, I did. You checked weapons that he owned? Yes, I did. What else did you do? We interviewed him and we interviewed his family members who were with him at the time. Okay. Ultimately, were you able to establish probable cause to arrest this individual for the murder of Melissa Ramirez? We were not able to establish probable cause to arrest him for the murder of Melissa Ramirez, no. So that person was basically released. Uh, he was never arrested? He was never arrested, no. Just investigated? He was investigated, that's correct. Okay. Uh, at that time, uh, was there any other suspects in, in this case uh, of uh, Melissa? At, at that specific time, we began canvassing the area that Melissa frequented and we started doing police work and getting names and checking addresses and checking on people. Okay. So, um, let me back up. The body from the crime scene on Jeffrey's Road of Melissa, who took possession of her body? Dr. Stern, the medical examiner. Okay, and was a full autopsy conducted of Melissa Ramirez's body? Yes, it was. Okay. Did Melissa Ramirez have a criminal history? Yes, she did. Okay. Uh, you testified that you, you went to the area where you, she was known to frequent. Correct. And what area is that? San Bernardo in Laredo. Okay, and what, what happens on San Bernardo Avenue? It's a place known for prostitution and uh, drug use, stuff like that. How many people, if you recall, did you make contact with, interview, bring in, question uh, in Melissa's case? Between field interviews and bringing people in, uh, high 20s, maybe 30, give or take, high 20s. Was at any time during your investigation of Melissa Ramirez, was Juan David Ortiz a, a, a preliminarily a suspect? Preliminarily, no. Was he anywhere on your radar? No, not initially, no. Okay. So what happens after September 3rd uh, while you're investigating the murder of Melissa Ramirez? On the 13th in the morning, we get a phone call, I get a phone call saying that there was another deceased female. Initially, they thought it was an auto pedestrian accident, but when the officers arrived, they saw that it was a similar crime scene to what we had with Melissa Ramirez, and that's when they called the Criminal Investigation Division out uh, because it was not an auto pedestrian accident. It appeared to have been a, another murder. Okay. So you have a second murder on your hands? Yes, sir. That you were assigned? Yes, sir. Okay. This second uh, murder 
seen. I'm going to direct you again to States Exhibit 66. And please describe geographically in relation to the first crime scene where this crime scene is. A very short distance away off of uh, Farm to Market 255. When you say short distance, an approximation? A couple of miles tops. It's very short. A couple of miles? If, if that. It's a very short distance. It's okay, so you, you, you said that Melissa Ramirez was on this Jeffries oh, Road? On the yellow thumbtack, yes. Okay. And if you could write down, did you get the name, identify the name of the second? Claudine Loera. Okay, can you write her name now? And can you put that on States Exhibit 66? Under. Okay. So you, the first murders on Jeffrey's Road on September the 3rd. Correct. The second murder is on 255, which is not far from? Not far at all, no. Okay. Please tell us what similarities, if any, that you as lead investigator, as co-lead investigator, find between crime scene one and crime scene two. To begin with, uh, they were both prostitutes with criminal histories. Uh, there were the same type of shell casings, uh, 40 Smith & Wesson, at both crime scenes. And they worked in the same area as each other, off of San Bernardo. Anything else regarding uh, where the injuries were located? All the injuries were above the shoulders, head, uh, gunshot wounds. So crime scene one, female. <laughs> works in prostitution, shot in the head. Correct. Ten days later, female two works in prostitution, shot in the head. I'm going to check the meeting on Sorry, I'm just repeating just, what he said. Just okay. ask the question, I guess. Okay, so those, you, you had those similarities, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to get now, I'm going to ask you to tell the jury what you did at, what's the location specifically named on, on this crime scene? FM 255 or they call it Camino Colombia also. Okay. Known as the toll road? Toll road 255. Okay. Is that located uh, within the city limits? No, that's north of Laredo in Webb County. In Webb County? Correct. Falling under the sheriff's jurisdiction? That is correct. What do you do on this on this case, on that day? On that day, I arrive at the crime scene. Um, by the time I arrive, the body's already gone. And there's stuff all over the place from what appeared to have been her purse and some of her other stuff, her shoes. Uh, there was blood and other stuff left in a trail as if she had dragged herself. And we began going through everything, looking through everything and taking photographs, same thing as in the first case, taking photographs, picking up the evidence that we found. I'm gonna show you what I'm marking as States Exhibit 84 through 101. I ask you to look at these photos.
Have you had an opportunity to review these exhibits? Yes. Do these exhibits fairly and accurately depict what's contained within them? Yes, they do. And just more specifically, do they uh, accurately represent what you saw at uh, FM 255 on September the 13th? Yes, they do. Of 2018? Yes, they do. States Exhibit 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 94, 95, 97, 98, 99, 100, and 101. No objections to those exhibits. I'm not going to introduce these. All right, states exhibits 84 through 90, exhibit 94, 95, 97 through 101 are admitted into evidence at this time. Now, you said something in your testimony that by the time you got there, that Claudine was no longer there. That is correct. And why is that? She was still alive. So the EMS had taken her to the hospital, where she died at the hospital. So she, she passed away at the hospital? Correct. Okay. <coughs> who, who found her? Who discovered uh, Claudine? Uh, passerby. A uh, truck driver. Truck driver? Yes, sir. Uh, describe the... The location for the jury of, of where she was found in relation to the road or the highway? Or the off road. the road, uh, a few feet off the road, also into the grass shoulder area. Based on your training and experience, uh, was she killed somewhere else and left there or was she killed there at that location? I'm going to object to speculation. I'm asking well, uh, sustain at this time, rephrase. I'm going to show you what's already been admitted to State's Exhibit 
87. What do we see here? You're seeing part of the crime scene off to the right. Her body was found in the grass or on the or on the asphalt? In the grass. Okay. How many casings do you recall being recovered at this location? I recall two. May I look at my notes to give you an answer? May I look at my notes? Yes, yes. I recall two. Will that I'm help sure. you yes. with your memory? Okay. Yes, two cases. What is it that's That's a that's what the crime scene looked like when I got there, with the exception of the markers. But that's what the crime scene looked like. What is that? What are those black? Uh, ob what is that black object in the center of the? The one near number five. Those are her shoes. I'll show you states exhibit eighty six. What does this uh, show? Different angle. It's exhibit 89. That's one of the shoes that was photographed from the other picture you showed me. And what is that? Uh, what, what is that underneath her shoe? Blood. Let's throw your stage exhibit uh, 95. What's all this? That stuff that we found around the area in one of the purses and in the general area scattered. Some of it was scattered, some of it was in her purse. We'll show you stage exhibit 85. What is this? I can't recall what that, what they're photographing. What is this up here? The whole area there had blood all over the place. It's hard to see from the picture, but the area was smeared with blood. picture of a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson casing. Also what brand? Federal cartridge. talked about the casting that, that uh, your that your team perform a casting in this location yes it did and what was that of some tire imprints that were close to the side of the road what is states exhibit 99 the tire imprint states exhibit 98 Difficult to see, but same thing. Okay. What is being done in State's Exhibit 101? That's a plaster mix, a kit uh, that they mix up and they pour into the into the imprint that it leaves, so they can lift an impression of the tire track. Uh, was and tell us what ultimately 
what did what was done with this cast? It was recovered and put into evidence. And as um, one of the lead investigators, what ultimately was done with that cast? It was compared to the other evidence or other imprints we had okay. for the a tire rolling we had. Okay. So there, there was a, there was a tire rolling performed as part of your investigation. Correct. Explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what is that? What's a tire rolling? It's a use a flat surface and you roll a vehicle over clean media to leave a tire imprint on it so you can get a clean and precise imprint of the tire. Was that done in this case with uh, the 2015 Dodge that belongs to Juan David Ortiz? Yes, it was. Okay. And what, what was done with that sample and the plaster? They were sent off to the Department of Public Safety. And what was done at the Department of Public Safety? They do their analysis there, okay. their comparison analysis. Okay. So it didn't just stay in your evidence room? No. It was sent off for analysis? Yes. Okay. And did you receive a report from that analysis? A report was received. Okay. I didn't receive it personally. That would have been received by the technicians who sent it out. But okay. yes, a report was received by the department. Very well. Now on this date is September the 13th, correct? So that is correct, yes. Ten days after the first murder. Correct. What, if anything, are you doing in, 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 in your investigation at this point? We go through the, the pocket trash, if you will, and whatever was in her purse left on the scene. Um, the phones start getting names and uh, go through the pictures to see where she had been recently. And when we found out that it was Claudine Luera, um, we had actually been looking for her in reference to Melissa's death. We had been looking for her. When, when you say we've been looking for her as a suspect or looking for her, what do you mean looking for her? As somebody who had last seen Melissa. One of the people who had last seen Melissa. Okay. So you were looking for her to help you in, in Melissa's murder? That is correct, yes. Where were you looking for her? In that San Bernardo area. Okay. The same area they worked. Were you all familiar with, with Claudine? She had a criminal history, yes. Uh, what type of criminal history did she have? I don't recall off the top of my head, but between the victims, there were theft, uh, substance abuse, possession, uh, assault, stuff like that. Prostitution Drug also. Oh, prostitu Drug related crimes. Drug related prostitution and theft, stuff like that. <coughs> Did you make any headway in the investigation of, uh, of Claudine's murder? We got back to doing police work, interviewing people, and we were in the process of interviewing people, picking people up, bringing them back, uh, debriefing them to see where, who had seen, who had last seen her, who she had been with, that type of stuff. So at, the, at this point in time, you testified that you've already, you already have uh, two, two murders, similar locations uh, with, with uh, similarities. Correct. Uh, do you have any uh, any opinions at this time, during during that moment, uh, whether what were your what were your thoughts, if any? At the time, I thought that we were probably uh, dealing with the same. It's opinion evidence you're on the side of this. You hear the question? Yeah. My question is, if he, what was his opinion regarding the two crimes at that time? Well, as far as them being related, or, or if. if We've gone over the similarities. I'll withdraw that question. Let me back up a little bit. You you testified that one person was 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 thoroughly investigated for the murder of Melissa Ramirez. Correct. 
and that person there was insufficient probable cause to arrest that person correct were there any other people being looked at as suspects in the case of Melissa Ramirez yes there were how many people were being looked at as legitimate suspects of Melissa Ramirez off the top of my head there was at least there was a few there was a three maybe I think two or three I don't remember off the top of my head the exact number okay but at least two top three around there po possible suspects yes <coughs> okay were you able to develop any probable cause on any of these two or three possible suspects no we weren't okay you, you, you testified earlier that you had already made contact up on September the 13th up to maybe 30 people already in that first investigation correct yes on the street field interviews talking to different people okay we've already gone over the similarities between crime scene one and crime scene two correct yes we have you've mentioned how they were shot where they work their drug abuse what is happening on if anything on September the 14th are you what what are you doing on that day we're actively looking for leads on Claudine and Melissa but we were following up some leads on Claudine's the <coughs> last person Claudine was seen with where was this where when you say actively uh, working what what does that mean where were, we were you actively doing this we were interviewing people at our station and we were having investigators go out and talk to different people and check people's whereabouts okay do you remember what day what day of the week this was when you were on September the 14th Friday a Friday yes okay and uh, what if anything happened that that Friday afternoon that you were actively working Melissa's case that Friday evening uh, we were at the station actually we had people there that we were interviewing and we received a phone call that from a trooper who was at a gas station in North Laredo and the trooper said that he had just run into somebody who we might want to speak with uh, because he felt it was related to our investigation up until this time and tell me what time more or less did this re this call come in from that trooper more may I may I look at my it, notes? It would it help you refresh your memory? Yes. Okay. evening around 9 p.m. give or take approximately 9 p.m. approximately yes what was your location on 9 p.m. on that Friday September the 14th of 2018 I was at the sheriff's office substation located off of highway 59 you received that report that you just testified to about a woman that the trooper says you may want to talk to, correct? Correct. What if anything happens uh, after that? The trooper shows up with uh, the person at the substation and we begin to interview her and talk to her. Okay. Uh, <coughs> tell us the name of that person. Erica Pena. Okay. When she arrived, okay. Up until this point of your investigation, first murder September third, twenty eighteen. Second murder September thirteenth, twenty eighteen. It's September the fourteenth of twenty eighteen, nine p.m. Is Juan David Ortiz on your radar? Up until which point? Up until nine p.m. on September the fourteenth, twenty eighteen. Is he on your radar? No, he's not. Okay. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury Erica's demeanor when she arrives. She was crying. She was scared. Uh, she was shirtless. She had a bra on, but she didn't have a shirt. 
So we got her a shirt from the substation there. Can you speak louder? Yes, sorry. She was uh, crying. She was seemed scared. Uh, she wasn't wearing a shirt, so we got her a shirt from the substation, and it was raining on and off that night. What was her emotional state? She was crying. She was scared. She was scared? She was very scared, yes. Okay. <coughs> During the time that she was scared, did she tell you what had happened? Yes, she did. <coughs> What is it that she told you happened? Well, 50 years ago. Excited utterance, Your Honor? She oh, she's, a, she's, a, uh, excuse me. Uh, she was brought in. She was scared. Uh, brought in as a, uh, by the trooper, making well, these Your Honor, may we approach? You heard the testimony. What, you want to respond to that at the bench? Well, she's already testified. Well, yeah, but still here. Go ahead and approach the bench. exception.
this again. When she was brought in, what was her state of mind? She appeared to be scared. She was crying. Was she, was she scared or not scared? She was scared. She was crying. She was what terrified. level of scared was she? On a scale of 1 to 10, how scared was she? Terrified. She said that she almost got killed. Okay. Did she provide you information? Yes, she provided me information. Okay. What type of information did she provide? That she had been assaulted. Okay. Did she provide you information on any vehicles? Yes. What type of vehicle? A white oil field type pickup truck, Dodge. Dodge? Dodge. Okay. Did she specify anything else, the details about the truck? Because um, you're saying white Dodge, is there anything else as far as how many doors it has? You know, she said it was a big oil field type truck. Okay. Did she provide for you? You, you said that uh, <clears throat> you just testified that. I don't know, which, what, what did she say, she had a gun pointed at her face, or what did she say? That she had been assaulted with a, with a handgun. Okay, did she provide information on who the person was that assaulted her with a handgun? She said it was a David who assaulted her. So the answer is yes, she provided information? She provided information, yes. On the person? On the person. What information was that? The information so was that... Yeah, no, okay, so you, you said it was David? Yes. Okay. Did uh, she provide for you, or did, were you able to find out in your investigation a location where this may have occurred? Eventually, yes. Okay. And eventually, were you able to identify um, the location where the uh, where the subject lived? I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Where the subject lived? Yes, correct. Okay. We were. And uh, where was that address? That address was 204 Burr Oak. Okay. Um, that location, uh, were you able to determine who the home, what, what's located on that location? 204 Burr Oak yes. is Mr. Ortiz's house. Mr. Ortiz's house. Was Mr. Ortiz's house. <laughs> and how were you able to verify that? Through investigative means and through the Webb County Appraisal District. Okay. At the time that you were, uh, did you in you interviewed Erica, correct? Yes, I did. How long did that interview with Erica last? I don't recall off the top of my head. <coughs> did she mention to you uh, Melissa or Claudine? She did mention both Melissa and Claudine. After, <coughs> did she accompany you to the house of Juan David Ortiz? Yes, we located the house and she accompanied us there, yes. Okay. When, what, if anything, did you do when you located the house of Juan David Ortiz? When we located the house, we backed off mm -hmm. and we started trying to find out who John David Ortiz was. You said John, is it John or Juan? Juan David Ortiz, I'm sorry. Okay, did you get off at the house? Or Not at that time, no. Okay. No, we didn't. I didn't know anything about who the person was, so we tried to figure out more about who the person was. Okay. Did you? Did, were you able to find out more about the person? No. Eventually, what did you find out about Juan David Ortiz? Eventually, later on, we found out the full name, and eventually, later on that night, we found out that he was a federal agent. Okay, but you said you uh, you said that there was a bolo put out. Yes. Okay, but a bolo, a, a, were you able to determine what vehicle uh, it was? Yes. So Through in, our in addition to the ownership of the house, you also determined the vehicle that he drove? Yes. Okay. Vehicle that was registered to him. Okay, and what did that information contain? The make and model of the vehicle and the license plate. Okay, and what did you do with that? In those three things? We put it out to the troopers that were on the highway and our deputies. Okay. Give us an approximately um, approximate time when this is, is going on. At what time? Which part? The part where you're putting out the bolo. Uh, probably around midnight, give or take. Okay.
What if anything happened after midnight? After midnight, we received information that the troopers had found the pickup truck at a gas station. The white Dodge, the pickup. White Dodge pickup truck with a license plate that belonged to Mr. Ortiz. Okay. Do you recognize Mr. Ortiz? Yes, I do. Can you identify him here in the courtroom with an article of clothing that he's wearing? Yes, he's wearing a black jacket and glasses. Okay. And where's he seated? He's seated next to his attorney. Right there. Okay. Let the record reflect he's identified the defendant. So you receive information that uh, that contact has been made with the vehicle. Correct. Approximately at what time does this occur? Might have been about half an hour after we put up maybe 12.30ish approximately. Okay, sometime after 12.30 in the morning. Sometime after 12.30, yes. So we're now on September 15th. 15th. Correct. Okay. okay. What if anything happens? after 12.30 in the morning? We get word that there's a foot chase and we are headed in that direction to go see what's happening. Did Erica uh, describe to you the, the relationship that she had with uh, this guy, David? That she knew well, him? I'm, I'm, I'm asking, did she discuss with you the relationship she had with this guy? So you asked me yes or no, not a description. Correct. I didn't ask to tell us. I asked yes or no. Did she? Can I ask that question, Judge? Yes. Just okay. answer the question that we have. So yes or no question. Can you repeat the question? <coughs> Please, yes. Did she tell you or explain to you the type of relationship that she had with this guy named David? Yes. Okay. And what type of relationship was that? Well, I'm going to object to you saying one or not. It's the state. Did she tell you if she had been seeing this guy on a regular basis? I'm going to object to leaving. And here's the And here's the how many times, if any, did she say that she saw David? And I'll get to hear say, Your Honor. Oh. How many times, you can answer, how many times, if any, did she say that she had seen this guy, David? Several. Okay. When you say several, can you give me, is it uh, more than five? Okay. It was a common thing, yes, several, more than five. Okay. What type of work did Erica uh, do? She was a prostitute. When somebody points a gun at somebody's face, is that a crime? Yes, it is. She reported to you that this David had pointed a gun at her? Yes, she did. <laughs> Are you familiar with Erica having a record for drugs? Or drug possession. Yes, I am. Okay. And how uh, how would you describe that record, or her criminal record in general? I don't understand the. Uh, did Erica have a criminal record? Yes, she did. Okay. How big of a criminal record did she have? She had been arrested several times. Okay. Let's go back to the foot chase. What eventually happens 
with the foot chase. I arrive on scene and get briefed that they had encountered him, Mr. Ortiz, at the gas station. When they tried to make contact with him, speak with him, he took off running <laughs> and they chased him down the road on San Bernardo to a complex that housed the hotel and some other small businesses. Was he eventually arrested? Yes, he was. Uh, and where was he found? He was found in the parking garage of the hotel on that complex. Specifically? The Ava Hotel. Specifically, more than that? Inside the back, the back of a pickup truck on the top level of the parking garage okay. at the Ava Hotel. Was he injured in any way? No. Okay. At the time that uh, he's arrested, do you have the occasion to go back and inspect his vehicle? I did not know. Where was his vehicle at this time? At the gas station. Okay. Do you know, if you have personal knowledge of any other law enforcement agency going and inspecting his vehicle? Yes. Okay. And what agency would that have been? The troopers from DPS. Okay. So DPS would have gone and secured the vehicle? Yes. They were over there while we were okay. looking for Mr. Ortiz. They were with the vehicle. Okay, so let's just first talk about the vehicle. The vehicle, what happened to the vehicle? What happened to the white Dodge? It was left at the gas station when he took off running. Okay, but after, after Ortiz is apprehended, he's arrested, he's put in a patrol unit, mm -hmm. and where is he taken to? To the substation. Okay, so he's taken to the substation. What happens to his vehicle? His vehicle gets impounded by DPS. Okay, and what does DPS do? They send the it to the substation. Okay, whose substation? The Sheriff's Office substation off of 59. Okay. <coughs> and that's where you were conducting your investigation, correct? That's where I was stationed at, at that time, yes. Okay. So the vehicle is towed by a tow, a tow truck, tow company? Yes. Okay, uh, to your substation? Correct. Okay. And what is done with the truck when, it's, when it arrives at the substation? They park it under one of the bays and the tow truck leaves it there, the driver leaves it there and okay. hands it over to us. And what, what, does, what, do, what do you all as a law enforcement agency do? You all secure it, keep it there, what, what happens to it? We, that particular one, we secured it there while we took care of everything else that was happening around that time. Okay. Um, did you at any time um, give an order to search that vehicle? I didn't, no. You didn't? I was not involved in the search of that vehicle, no. Okay. I was tied up with other tasks. Was that vehicle, uh, as part of the overall investigation, uh, was that vehicle eventually searched? Yes, it was. Okay. Uh, who was the other agency working the case with you? DPS, Texas Rangers. Texas Rangers, okay. Yes. Uh, was a uh, was a weapon eventually found in that vehicle? Yes, it was. Okay, and was that weapon secured? The weapon was secured, yes. Okay. Now, uh, also, um, you were aware that Juan David Ortiz ran away from the officers and ran away from his vehicle? Correct. And he ran away from the strike? Well, object lack of personal knowledge. Uh, he, he'd already answered that. You know. Ooh. Okay, so again. You already had, you're, you were already part of the investigation. You're already aware that he ran from the strikes. Yes. On Jefferson and San Bernardo. Correct. He ran from Troopers Bradshaw and Troopers Obregón. Yes. And he ran from his truck. Yes. He's arrested at the Ava Hotel. Correct. Hiding in the back of a pickup truck. Correct. Give me a second. Is a Come back in and then break. <coughs> so just remind you, not discuss the facts of the case. I got a message that one of the jurors needs to step out, but okay. I think it's, it looks like most of them do now. <laughs> um, we'll probably go another 20 minutes after that. We're only going to go to 5.30, like I had said, but go ahead, Mr. Medina. <coughs>
the exhibit numbers. Which one? They haven't been offered yet. No, no need to be seated. I'm going to just excuse the jury for the day. Uh, we're going to recess. I did tell you we're approximately 530. Uh, we're going to just recess at this point. It's 525, according to that clock. Uh, I'll ask you to please be here by 830 tomorrow. Uh, we'll work 530, 545. Expect it. Okay? I'll just remind you not to discuss the facts of the case and uh, not to watch any news accounts regarding this case. Thank you. You're excused. Thirty tomorrow. <laughs>